Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here, D. Wood, and with me now is the apostate prophet. How you doing, AP? Oh, hi, Mark. Uh, I'm doing well. How are you? Hey, have you heard of these? Uh, have you heard of these guys? <laughs> Ahmedis? Hey, why you why are you silenced? You mute yourself. Check check. You got to go check check. Check check. Are you doing? Are you messing around on purpose? How did you just go silent? What is going on here? Hey, this is a crap way to start a show. <laughs> well, what, what's going on? What is this? I'm wondering if it's on my end. I might just start the, I might just shut this thing down and start it over. Hey, it says guest has muted themselves. Unmute that and see what happens. It specifically says guest has muted themselves. AP, click unmute. Uh oh. <laughs> what just happened? All right, I guess. Well, this is by far the dumbest start to a live stream ever. It's weird. He was saying he didn't he didn't mute himself, and yet it was saying he muted himself. Hey, check, Hello. check. Oh, okay. There's AP. It works now? Yeah. For I did nothing different. I literally just left and came back right in. For the next 10 so seconds, you'll have audio, and then it will say you muted yourself. You muted yourself. It, and and it is, it's not even, I was clicking on it sort of repeatedly when he told me that. But nothing changed. Uh, That's yep. Weird. Weird. Yeah, weird. Anyway. In theory, I don't know how this would work, but in theory, it could even be on my end because uh, this is an old, old, old system that doesn't work when I get. I could get a whiteboard uh, if, I, if we need to. Yeah. If, you, if your sound goes out again, just pretend you're Ali Dawa's wife and start using a <laughs> whiteboard. Yeah. I will oh, so anyway, have you heard of these guys? Nuts. Uh, yeah, uh, Ahmedis. Yes, I have. I have. Of course, I have. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I but, have. Uh, and you are of the view that they are not actually Muslims, whereas I am of the view that they are, in fact, Muslims. Is well, I am of the correct view that they are not Muslims. That's. I would say that 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 is the difference here. Uh, so I'm of the, of the correct view that they are not Muslims. Uh, you and others are of are, are mistakenly think that they are actually Muslims. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, that's that, that's the difference, I guess. Yeah. Actually, actually, let me. Uh, I, I can give my sort of overview that's going to come up, guys. So in this uh, during this live stream, we're going to watch some videos. We're going to watch a couple videos from Ahmadis breaking down uh, their view and why they have it. These will be short videos. These are all these are all short videos. Um, we're going to look at a couple of Ahmadi videos, and then we're going to look at a couple of responses from Muslims, namely Sheikh Asim al-Hakim and Shabir Ali, who uh, don't believe that Ahmadis are Muslims. But um, yes, yeah, so we're going to check that out. I'll just give you my sort of thoughts on this issue here at the I'm beginning, because, because uh, it's Ahmadis are widely regarded, and they brag about this, as you're going to soon see, that uh, they're typically rejected as Muslims by the uh, vast majority of Muslims in the world. And so the question is, the question is, why in the name of common sense would I say that uh, I think they're actually Muslims or that they actually qualify as Muslims? Uh, let's look at a let's look at a couple brief passages. I'll give you I'll give you my thoughts on this issue. 
Uh, I could do it very, very quickly here. But uh, so this is Sahih Muslim. It was narrated that Uthman said, the Messenger of Allah said, whoever dies knowing and acknowledging that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, he will enter paradise. So here you have passages like this in the Hadith, which make it sound like Islam is pretty simple. You just maintain that, hey, there's no God worthy of worship, nothing worthy of worship except Allah. And he says, you'll enter paradise here. You'll enter paradise. Well, if you're making it, keep in mind, there are, there are more strict requirements than this. But if you're looking at passages like this and saying, do Ahmadis know that there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah, you'd have to say, yes, they wouldn't, they wouldn't fall short of this any more than uh, other Muslims. Then you have this. This is also Sahih Muslim. We're, we're not reading this entire thing. Just look at the end here. Just look at the end. So someone's asking Muhammad questions. Look at the very end of this passage here, which is just, it's just the bottom of the page. It's not the end of the passage. This is a long passage. Uh, he said, O Muhammad, tell me about Islam. Tell me about Islam. So this is defining what Islam is. Tell me about Islam. The Messenger of Allah said, Islam means to bear, and we'll go to the next one, bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, but Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, to establish the Salat, to pay the Zakat, to fast the month of Ramadan, and to perform the pilgrimage to the house, the Kaaba, if you have the means. So there he breaks down the infamous five pillars of Islam, but he says this is what Islam is. Islam is doing these things. Well, guess what? Ahmadis do these things. And if you're saying, no, they don't take the pilgrimage, yes, they do. Yes, they do. They have kind of a, a don't ask, don't tell policy where just don't say what, don't say you're an Ahmadi or something like that and just go along. So in other words, Nabil's parents took the uh, pilgrimage to Mecca and so on. So here, if you said, hey, uh, performing these five pillars, that's what, that's what, Islam is, according to Muhammad, well, guess what? Ahmadis do all the five pillars. They do their prayers, they recite their shahada, they do all these things. So that's Islam, according to Muhammad. You go a little further down the, down the passage, and then you have what is faith. So there you had, he said, you can see a couple lines down. He faith? said, tell me about faith. He said, it is to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, the last day, and to believe in Al-Qadr, the divine will and decree, both the good and bad of it. So here you have the six articles of faith. Guess what? Ahmadis believe in all six articles of faith. So I'm looking at these kinds of things, and I'm saying, wait a minute, you've got all these uh, all these passages here, and Muhammad is defining Islam and saying what's required. Ahmadis, Ahmadis meet all these requirements. Ahmadis meet all these requirements of what a Muslim is. So what's the difference with Ahmadis? Well, they, they have a different view of end times. See, the, the standard objection against them is, ah, you say, you Ahmadis say that there's another prophet who comes after Muhammad, so you can't be real Muslims. But the problem there is all Muslims believe in someone who's coming after Muhammad, right? You, Sunnis believe that in the second coming of Jesus, that Jesus is going to return. That's what Ahmadis believe. They believe that Jesus returned as Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, not actually Jesus, not actually Jesus, but he's the fulfillment of the prophecy about the return of Jesus. And Mirza Ghulam Ahmed also claimed to be the Mahdi. Now, you can, you can reject that. The question is, does that rule you out? Believing in a different view of the end times. So Muslims believe in the second coming of Jesus. If you're wrong, if you're wrong about identifying who the second coming of Jesus is, does that make you not a Muslim? If you, if you adopt the, if you believe in the wrong guy as the fulfillment of the prophecies about Jesus, does that make you not a Muslim? And if so, how would you, how would you prove this? How would you prove, hey, you've misinterpreted the prophecies about the second coming of Jesus, therefore you're not a Muslim? Well, I don't recall, I don't recall, hey, you have to have a correct view of the second coming of Jesus in order to be a Muslim. I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of that. Um, if you wanted to say they're not Muslims, if you wanted to say they're not Muslims, I think you'd have to go to a passage like uh, Surah 4, verse 65, right there in the middle of the page. So Surah 4, verse 65, something along these lines. But no, by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. 
So what does this have to do with anything? Well, here you have no faith. You have no real Islamic faith unless you make Muhammad judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. You have to accept every, everything Muhammad decides, everything Muhammad says. You have to accept it without question. So if you wanted to say someone's not a Muslim, you say you're not accepting everything Muhammad decided without question. You're questioning things, you're reinterpreting things, you're committing innovation and so on. And so you could say, since Ahmadis are interpreting things wrongly, then they haven't accepted Muhammad's decisions with full submission. They've done something else, and therefore they have no real Islamic faith. This, I think you could use to say they're not, they're not Muslims because they have no real faith, because they interpret things differently. The problem I have here is I don't know any Muslim who doesn't, who wouldn't be guilty of violating this in some way. So just a, a, accepting all of Muhammad's decisions with full submission. You can start quoting hadiths to Muslims and they'll start reinterpreting them very, very quickly. Every, every last one. They'll even reinterpret the Quran. So in other words, you can bring up a bunch of passages about the Quran affirming the Torah and the gospel and ask a Muslim, what does that mean? Oh, it means he's saying the Torah and the gospel have been corrupted. Exact opposite of what the passages are saying. So you have Muslims who will reject what Allah says or radically reinterpret what Allah says. You'll have Muslims who radically reinterpret what Muhammad says. And that's just standard in Islam. So if that is enough, if it's enough to rule Ahmadis out, having a wrong view of the end times, if that's enough to rule them out, they haven't accepted something Muhammad said, and therefore they're not real Muslims. Great. I don't know any real Muslims. I've never met a real Muslim in my life because every Muslim I've ever met will significantly reinterpret not only the Quran, but also the Hadith. And so uh, I'm confused as to why I'm, a, I'm, I'm looking for a consistent basis. On what consistent basis could a Muslim, an Orthodox Muslim say, these guys are outside the fold of Islam because they do this? Whenever you say that, it'll be, oh, you are going against the standard interpretation of this Quran verse or this passage and so on. Well, great. Every Muslim, every Muslim reinterprets the Quran and the Hadith. So how is that ruled? Anyway, I'm looking for a consistent basis on which, upon which to rule out Ahmadis. All right. You got that, AP? Just wanted to share my yep. view here at the beginning. Yep. Yep. Cut it. A lot of people are posting offensive comments saying Ahmadis like, like this. Look at this. This is very just, this is Ahmadiyya Look phobia. At Look at this. This is literally Ahmadiyya phobia. You imagine what is, this? What is, yeah. Um, someone here uh, really says, do Sunnis accept Ahmadis? No. No. They're, no. Uh, if you're talking about as a whole, uh, Nabil showed me a study one time a long, long time ago, which is basically the closer you are to Ahmadis, the more Ahmadis you know, the more likely you are to believe that they're Muslims. So you do have Muslims who think that Ahmadis are true Muslims, um, but they're the minority. They're the minority. You go to places like Pakistan, if you want to apply for an ID or for a passport or something, they actually make you curse or in some way degrade Mirza Ghulam Ahmed and to declare that his followers are not Muslims. So you have to do that to even like get a passport there. So that shows you uh, kind of the view, the overview of Ahmadis in the Muslim world. They're not looked upon favorably. And the Ahmadis use this, wear this like a badge that they're rejected. And this somehow proves that they're the true. I know that in Pakistan, for example, uh, if you want to go on, on the Hajj, um, if you want to go on the pilgrimage, you have to, I think, sign a form um, that states that you are not an Ahmadi uh, Muslim or something like that. And yeah, that I think it's, I think it's Saudi or yeah, I think Saudi Arabia lets you slide. They had this don't ask, don't tell. Just just show up, yeah, show up, yeah. do your do your pilgrimage. You believe in Muhammad and so on. But yeah, I think Pakistan specifically doesn't let you go. You have to sign something saying you uh yeah. you reject Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. This is if why you, they say that for people who have this restriction and who are, are from Pakistan, uh for them it is not uh they're not obligated to go on the Hajj because of this because they are being prevented and oppressed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, because of the way they're, they've been treated in various uh, areas, their caliphate. So you have Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. So he's born in the 1800s. Let me see exactly when. He's born in the 1800s. He's born in 1835. 
Uh, at first, at, so he's born in 1835. He lives in uh, in in India. He, he's he's born in uh, the city of Kadian. That's why lots of times you'll hear people refer to them as Kadianis. Kadiani, 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 Kadiani. Anyway, um, they'll be referred to as Kadianis. So he's born in 1835. He starts um, defending Islam against uh, Christian missionaries who were pretty darn successful in reaching Muslims with the gospel. So he starts responding to them. And for a while, he's celebrated as this uh, as this powerful Muslim debater and so on. I think he was, I'm not sure exact, I think his father died around the age of 40. I'm saying that because I think I remember noticing the parallel with Muhammad that, you know, he's around 40 when he concludes that he's a prophet. But I think he's around the age of 40, his father dies and uh, he con- he's concludes that he's getting revelations and so on. And announces at some point announces that he's the Messiah. He's the second coming of Jesus. Uh, But so after he dies, he dies in 1908. After he dies, they have the successors. They have their own Ahmadi Caliphate. It's I think the fourth. I think the fourth actually left and set the Ahmadi headquarters, the the world headquarters up in London because it was safer than it was uh, back east. And so uh, I think it was in London. I think they've moved since then to their own uh, to, to their own spot uh, somewhere else in England. Well, it's, it's nothing special uh, to just uh, to just at some point uh, decide to declare that you are the second coming of of Jesus. You know, like, everyone, we hear, we hear from these guys. We hear from these guys all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone does it all the time. Like, it's like yeah, everyone at least does it once in their life. Yeah, yeah. lots of people claim to be the second coming of Jesus. Uh, they usually don't get a ton of followers. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, by the time he died, I think had around four hundred thousand followers. So he was very persuasive. He was uh, he was a debater. So he was a debater. So he would debate the Christian missionaries. And after he became, um, he announced that he's the Messiah. He would debate debate Muslims who disagreed with him, and he would debate Hindus and so on. So he debated, he did lots of debates. He um, wrote dozens of books. And uh, so th- this, is, this is still a movement. I think there are between, there are between 10 and 20 million Ahmadis in the world today, which is, that's a pretty, that's a big number, 10 to 20 million, but it's a small percentage of the Muslim population when you're talking about 2 billion adherents. So they, ba- they basically make up between half a percent and 1% of the global Muslim population and then their lower number actually proves that they are the, the one true religion yeah. yeah we're about to see some problems with that we're about to see some problems with that when they're going to use this as an argument um so just trying to think i've always had kind of a favorable view of ahmadis because back uh in college when i'm looking into islam i'm talking to a lot of ahmadis and they tended to be more peaceful more polite than a lot of the other muslims i would interact with who you know, support other ideas about Islam. So I had a pretty favorable, pretty favorable view of Ahmadis. And also, even back then, even back then, if someone would say Ahmadis aren't Muslims, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, wait, Nabil for the past whatever year it was, two, three, four years, depending on where we were in our discussions, it's like this guy, this guy constantly tells me to believe in Islam and that Muhammad is a true prophet and that I need to believe in Muhammad as a prophet and the Quran is the word of God. I'm looking at their arguments as the arguments he was using was, was the perfect preservation of the Quran, the scientific miracles. It was the same stuff and trying to get me to believe in Islam. So it was just weird to say, ah, and these guys aren't Muslim. Wait, this guy who spends all his time trying to convince me to believe in Muhammad and believe in the Quran, that's not a Muslim. That's That guy's not a Muslim. So anyway, I thought it was a... Thought it was a little weird, but I've always had a pretty positive view of Ahmadis. Although recently, I have to say, this guy's got some attitude problems, man. This also happened recently when we were uh, when we were traveling, uh, when we were at the airport. Uh, I remember when we were we, we were we were eating at some point because we were quite hungry, and then somebody came along and said, uh, started talking with us and said that Ahmadis are not real Muslims. David suddenly got so mad, he got up, took his 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 plate. That he had with all the food, smacked the guy in the face, beat the crap out of him. It, it was it was brutal. Yeah, but I mean, people need to learn. People need to learn to yeah. keep their stupid mouth shut. Yeah. So yeah, don't ever say anything like that against me or. Uh... <laughs> 
Uh, given that about ten, wait, wait, <laughs> given that about ten percent of people who watch don't understand when we're joking or not, this is funny. We got to get this clip. David, <laughs> AP admits David Wood beats people up. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so um, Ahmadis. Nabil. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's a it's an issue where I also kind of uh, I have a tendency to kind of root for the underdog if someone's being attacked and I see Ahmadi's being attacked. Even matter of fact, even before I knew Nabil, back when I was locked up, I remember reading articles about uh, Ahmadi's being attacked in places like Indonesia and so on. So I was always wondering what that was about, and then met Nabil, and then he filled me in and so on. Uh, anyway, you've got Ahmadi's. Um, they are, they're very uh, focused on missionary work. So they're against jihad in the sense that lots of Muslims would be in favor of jihad. But they're, uh, they're very pro-preaching and uh, just, just general missionary work. So they go all over the world and they have their uh, conferences and stuff. And they send, uh, they send people all around the world. Hey, Pete. That is kind of where I have a problem with them because um, Islam without jihad is kind of boring. What's the point? Yeah, yeah it is kind of it is kind of weak. Um, but the Ahmadis, the Ahmadis, right? When you see when you see them getting more aggressive, we saw this. We saw them getting way more mocking than I than I've been familiar with in the past. Way more insulting. Way more uh, you know chest thumping and so on. I think all. I think all the Islamic community, the different Islamic communities are going through what I might call Muhammad hijab syndrome, where they're realizing these 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 younger Dawa guys come up and start thumping their chest. Oh, we're strong. We're strong. You, you weak. We're strong. They're all going through. They all wouldn't normally act like that. But they're saying, wow, this this makes you really popular. You really win a lot of support if you just go around saying we're strong. They weak. We're strong. They weak. That's enough to convince people. Uh, to join, to rally around them. So I think you're just going to have to deal with this where uh, Shias, Ismailis, the Twelvers, whoever, uh, Sufis, uh, Ahmadis, I think everyone's just going to realize, wait a minute, if we want to compete for attention, we have to start acting like this. And so everyone's going to have to get more aggressive, which is pretty, uh, which is, I don't know, it's kind of amusing. It's kind of amusing that everyone's thumping their chest now trying to impress everybody. But yeah, so when they're when they're uh when they're mocking us and insulting us, the real target audience there is other Muslims. They're trying to show, you see, look, we're the ones who are defending Islam against these guys. We're the ones defending Muhammad against these guys. These other guys, they're not other other Muslims, they're not defending Muhammad against these guys. I'll defend Muhammad against these guys. And you see, we're the true representatives of Islam in order to get people rallying around them. That didn't really work out very well. I, I, I just yesterday I saw a, um, a a tweet which I think forgot to save on my bookmarks of by some Muslims who were making fun of them uh, after the because of the debate oh, yeah. and saying saying uh, if even if even these guys are laughing about the Ahmadis because of their terrible performance, uh, how low can you sink or something like that? <laughs> Good point. To be fair. To be fair. Uh... Bad arguments are pretty standard. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, look what you got here. You're right. Infidel Noodle does just wake up and. Yeah, that's what you do. That's what jump you jump on for two minutes. Say hi to everyone. They, <laughs> it was kind of cool. Though, right? <laughs> it's like, hey, hey yeah. I'm about to leave. But hi, everyone. That's nice. That's what I, they do. I right, will take a couple of super chats real quick. And then we're going to jump into some videos, 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 videos. Uh, Talmudic. Tunnels construction. Mike Winger is the kind of guy to say, "Uh oh, someone's upset when a baby is crying in a restaurant." <laughs> oh, he'd have to. Uh oh, someone's upset when a baby is crying in a restaurant. That's pretty perfectly good. accurate. That sounds exactly like something you would say. Shake yeah, Mike Winjeline. Are Ahmadiyya Muslims? Well, are Klingons Romulan? So we see which uh, which camp Shake Mike Winjeline is. He doesn't believe they are actual Muslims. And the, the comparison that normally gets brought up is that Ahmadis are to Muslims as Mormons are to Christians. And I just disagree. If you look at Mormons, they 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 reject several of the core doctrines of Christianity. And so that's what puts them outside the camp. Whereas Ahmadis don't what reject if- the core doctrines of Islam. What if somebody says instead um, uh, Ahmadis are to Muslims as Jehovah's Witnesses are to Christians? 
it would be the same thing. Jehovah's Witnesses are considered a cult because they reject core core Christian doctrines. So in other words, if you wanted to say Ahmadis aren't Muslims, I would have to say which core but, but not Muslim the same doctrine level as Mormonism. Like Mormonism is, uh, goes very, very, very far, very extreme in, in, in rejecting core Christian beliefs. I think Jehovah's Witnesses are more um, are less extreme in their rejection of certain core beliefs of Christianity, but are just mm. they I mean, do where, reject. They do. Re, that, that's the point. It, the general definition of a cult is something that you know bears some superficial resemblance, or has certain things in common, or derives from some source, or is an offshoot of, and yet rejects certain core doctrines. That's that's like what uh -huh. cults do. They reject a core doctrine. That's why I said that I don't consider Seventh-day Adventists a cult, even though I would think they're wrong about certain things. There could be groups that are wrong about certain things, but they still have they still have the Christian core doctrines and so on. And so if someone wanted to say that eh, Mideas aren't Muslims, I would have to say which core doctrine. The only the only answer you normally get is they believe in someone after Muhammad. You say, ah, Muhammad is the seal of the prophets, but they believe in someone who came after Muhammad. Oh, well, OK, well, you all believe in someone who's coming after Muhammad. So you need to clarify here. Anyway, I would I'd be interested in seeing, and maybe some of the maybe some of the uh, critics of the Ahmadis can actually show that they do reject core doctrines, but uh, I haven't seen it yet. Uh -huh. uh, late said in David's Muslim voice, "Late, any career advice? Sif Talk has destroyed me with his mighty straw men, so I need to start a new one." Thanks. Oh yeah, so. Uh, Thaddeus over at Reason Answers posted a video a while back called 100 Reasons Muhammad's a False Prophet. And Saif Talk, Saif Talk responded to like the first seven or something like that. We might, I think we're going to go through that on like Friday or something like that. We'll go through that on like Friday. We'll play the first, uh, th they're very quick because he packs 100 of them into one video. So he's doing them rapid fire. But we'll watch Thaddeus's first seven reasons and then Sife Talk's response. I'm sure it's going to, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it's going to be very powerful because it's Sife Talk. Sife Talk is, is, is uh, I would say, unbeatable, you know, um, so that is a very serious problem. Yeah. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Late powerful Mike, stuff. late like Mike Winger, I see. No, one of the reasons we're late is because Mike Winger's on time. You guys think Israel will go to war with Hezbollah? What's your expert opinion, AP? Um, I would say so Israel doesn't really want to go to war with Hezbollah. Um, so it's it if things go as they are going right now, and it doesn't escalate further, it will probably remain at at that at just shooting back and forth until until the Gaza war is over. But uh, if if they if they escalate further. Israel might as well just to do it because they, they are aware that this will be that this will be very very difficult to handle and uh, and there is no need to start a major war in the region so they have been explicitly saying that they don't want a war and they and they want to they want the other side to stop escalating but the other side doesn't stop escalating they they keep making threats and saying we will exterminate you we will annihilate you there will be no rules and all that so I don't know if they escalate it might very well go to get to a war yep um, can we agree it's basically going to be Hezbollah that decides whether there's a war? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's going to be their call. And then the response from Israel will be, they've asked for it, and now they're going to get it. So whatever you and ask for, Hezbollah, if you don't want a war, you're not going to get one. If you want a war... the pro-Palestine crowds, they're like, they're like, yeah, Hezbollah, yeah, make us proud, make us proud, yeah. Then when the war starts and Hezbollah will, uh, is, is getting uh, crushed, they'll be like, what? why do we have to fight? Why, is, why all the violence? Peace now, ceasefire now, what is this? Yeah. It was crazy. Hijab has this video. Uh, I watched like the first minute of it because I was, I was suggesting it to you as something we might want to cover but just the title the title was the protests are working and i'm like what planet do you live on like what sort of fantasy land do you guys the protests are working really the protests you've been doing since october are working you've 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 slowed israel down they're, they're not they're not mopping the floor with hamas they're not hunting them down in their tunnels and so on they're not they haven't gone through all of gaza and now they're at the very end but your protests have been my goodness this is the proof. It's the proof. It's, 
that it's working. I don't understand why D. Wood won't start on time and let AP humiliate himself by joining in late. Yeah, I should do that. It'd be funny. Yeah, that would be funny. Hey, check this out. May says, great work, David and AP. I have Muslim friends who keep referring me to a growing Dahwa channel called Muslim Lantern. The guy is a huge liar. Really? In Dawa? He's in Dawa and he's a huge liar? That is an absolute shocker. Consider doing a response to his lies. I'll tell you what, May. You got a golden ticket now. You got a golden ticket. Find Not to be the, confused with golden shower. Talk to your Muslim friends. Talk to your Muslim friends. Tell them to pick the most powerful video by Muslim Land. I don't know if this is a guy who does like five-hour live streams like Total Nerds. Or if he uh, if he makes shorter videos or whatever, preferably, you know, uh, uh, basically a 10 to 15 minute video is what we can get through if we're actually responding to stuff. So if you find to ask your ask your Muslim friends, what is the most powerful Muslim lantern video that's somewhere in the 10 to 15 can be a little longer, but uh, in that range that we can respond to, what's the most powerful video he has and then send it over and we'll go through it in a live stream. Oh, this guy, this guy, uh, it's fine. Th this guy actually, Muslim Lantern actually sent me an email once and, uh, said that he would like to, um, he would like to offer a debate on his channel between me and, uh, and, and Sheikh Uthman, <laughs> even Farouk. And I said, oh, he wants to have a debate. Yeah, sure. I agree to it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then he responded later. He said, uh, never, "Never mind." He said he doesn't want to have a debate. Then, then yeah, why I'm, are you emailing? <laughs> yeah, I, ju I was just thinking that Sheikh Uthman only wants to have a discussion when he's like surrounded by his group and his little uh, his little cubby hole. I, there's, yeah. I, I've said, I've said for a while, he's, there's no scenario where he's going to engage in an actual debate. So just when you were saying yeah. it, I was like, "What? He was going to debate?" But yeah, someone Apparently else. He never even someone asked else him thinking. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, I don't think that guy will ever show up, no matter what the situation is anymore, because he knows we're going to make fun of him and like put ketchup on ourselves and be like, oh, they got me. Oh, he knows. He knows what would happen now yeah, uh, after yeah. his fake hate crime. Me strong. Uh, did Mirza Ghulam Ahmed have a huge mole on his bottom? Well, that would be the only thing that could possibly verify if he's a true prophet. So hopefully. Not, not, not the only thing. Not the only thing. Uh, we also have to see if he has the sexual strength of 30 men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got to have that. If he doesn't, he's we can't trust him. Yeah. I'm, and I think he had, a, he had 12 kids. He had 12 kids. Five of them died as children, seven, seven uh, lived to adulthood. But, I mean, that's that's more output than Muhammad, have to say. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's, you could say he's more of a man. <laughs> um, I'm digging the look in the thumbnail, D-Wood, looking like a mom right out of the shower. Yep, we, uh, we are all... <laughs> <laughs> we inserted ourselves into the classic picture of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed um, wearing that thing on his Taking head. Taking a shower with Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. And uninspiring philosophy said, I don't believe they are. All right, we've got more hmm, people coming down on the they're not Muslim side. Interesting. All right, we got more super chats, but let's go ahead and jump into a video here. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. This is an introduction to who he is from the Ahmadi community. So who was Mirza Ghulam Ahmed? We Ahmadi Muslims believe Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, may peace be upon him, to be the promised Messiah awaited by all religions. Born in 1835, in a small village in India called Qadian, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was raised into a Muslim family, but from a young age had an unusual interest in religion. Growing up in British colonized India, Islam was undergoing attacks from all sides, and Muslims were being converted to Christianity at an alarming rate. Ha! That's what we like to hear, Muslims converting to Christianity at an alarming rate. But then the Ahmadi view is, in order to stop this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. What Just to give you an idea, in 1851, there were 91,000 Christians in India. Just 30 years later, almost half a million. 
Let's get it to 100%. Let's get it to a billion. His first book, Barahina Ahmadiyya, defended Islam. Bernadia Ahmadiyya, burn, Bernadia, Bernadia Ahmadiyya. Can't help it. Why does why does every why does everything that they say fit into <laughs> into Falco's Rock Me Amadeus? <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yes. And its teachings against the other religious movements. It proved the superiority of the Holy Quran over other revealed scriptures. And prove the truthfulness <laughs> of the stop, Holy Prophet. Stop, 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 it stop, proved stop. it. He just said it proved the, it. Why do you want to stop? These Ahmadis, uh, the Ahmadi people, like the regular Muslims, but I suspect even more often, as far as I've experienced, have this tendency to very liberally use the word prove and proof. Oh, we're about to see. It's about think, to get worse, AP. I think, oh, I, I see. Uh, I don't know, but something fell fell down. An apple fell down from that tree. This is the proof. Mm -hmm. The proof that yes. Islam is superior. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, in our debate, uh, during their opening statement, they go to, they go to uh, what was it, Sir 81 or whatever, and they're like, uh, look, you see, this is... When they, <laughs> when they went to it, and I went ahead and pulled up Sir 81, I'm glancing at it and said, and the stars will fall. And I was thinking... How would an Ahmadi say that that is being fulfilled, that stars are falling? How would an Ahmadi say that's being fulfilled? Oh, yes, look at Bill Cosby. He's a star, and yet he's fallen. And look at uh, look at uh, Harvey Weinstein. He's You see, this is the truth. But that's their, like, interpretation. They'll they'll take any little statement and say, you and inter give it some crazy interpretation. That's obviously not what was meant by the text. And declare that it's been uh it's declare that it's been fulfilled. They 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 started talking about the Dajjal and how the Dajjal, although it refers in the hadith, as I mentioned, to uh, certain individuals like a kid in Muhammad's time, um, that it's actual the actual meaning of it on a on a on a deeper uh, metaphysical level is that it refers to certain nations that are that are in today's time uh, developing and proving to be the Dajjal actually and just like that certain scientific references in the quran are actually metaphorical messages about mm -hmm. uh what is happening around us and it, it's just when, when the guy went on a rant like that I, i'm i stopped following at some point because i thought this is just so so ridiculously stupid yeah and <laughs> it's pretty pretty darn bad pretty darn bad which is why i compared it to uh alex jones saying talking about the freaking frogs okay yeah. um <laughs> And uh, it, it, you've noticed something that they're quick. To, they're they're not using the word "prove" the way we would uh, the way we would use it. But you're about to see more. Not in this video, but uh, uh, one of the other Ahmadi clips I have. The video. We're not going to go through all of it because it's long. But we're going to look at the first two. Um, the title of the video is Seven Irrefutable Proofs That <laughs> Ahmadiyya Islam Is True." And we'll go ahead and look at the first, their, their, their main two, their top two, and we'll see if these are anything we would regard as irrefutable proofs, or if we would regard them as like some of the dumbest arguments we've ever seen for anything ever. Probably uh, we'll, will be people will be, we will be uh, flabbergasted. Hey, how popular do you think we'd be among Ahmadis if we were like, wow, we, we rejected Islam because of all the dumb arguments, but now that we've, we've seen these powerful Irrefutable proofs from Ahmadis. We are converting to Ahmadi Islam. Hey, may, may, maybe I should. I should in a little bit. Uh, I should do a monologue where I pretend to be totally amazed by Ahmadiyya, and then we can, and then we can clip that and and spread that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe just do do that at some random point after some uh, after some <laughs> argument that's given, and your mind can be blown. Your mind can be blown, and then everyone can clip that. <laughs> okay. All right. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The scholars of the time praised it immensely and said no such service to Islam had been done in the last 1400 years. His innate desire for the world to accept Islam was evident in his letter to Queen Victoria, the ruler of the British Empire, who were in control of India at the time. On the occasion of her Diamond Jubilee, he wrote a letter to Queen Victoria. You see, this proves he invited her to accept Islam. He received revelations throughout his life, whereby Allah she, taught him the Islam. She, uh, but she didn't convert, right? No. 
but he he it's, wrote a letter to her. That's interesting. I'll write a letter to someone. Truth. I'll write a letter to this someone, and these guys can uh, conclude that I'm a prophet. Which Muslims had forgotten. As a result, his knowledge of Islam and the Holy Quran. Oh, did you catch this? Uh, God gave him the special understanding of Islam that Muslims had forgotten, and that's why he was uh, his knowledge of Islam is so great. Check this out. Whereby Allah taught oh, just, him the like Islam Joseph which Smith. Muslims had. What? Just like Joseph Smith. Yeah, check this out. Received yeah, revelations first. throughout his life. Whereby Allah taught him the Islam which Muslims had forgotten. As a result, his knowledge of Islam and the Holy Quran surpassed those around him, and his reputation as a defender of Islam grew. He began to be recognized as the Mujaddid, reformer of the age. His revelations continued and ultimately led to his claim under divine instruction that he was the promised Messiah and Mahdi that the world is waiting for. Both promised Messiah and Mahdi. He's the Messiah that the Jews are waiting for. He's the second coming of Jesus that Christians are waiting for. He's the return of Jesus that uh, Sunni Muslims are waiting for. And he's the Mahdi. It's pretty, he's Mahdi. pretty. And he's Mahdi. Mahdi Mouse. As was prophesied. This is very, very interesting. So if, if I, if I um, lengthily developed this whole idea that I am, that I'm receiving revelations mm -hmm. and thereby started uh, reading new things into the Quran mm -hmm. uh, and claimed that this is actually the forgotten true knowledge and true understanding of the religion, uh, would that then be acceptable? Because it seems like that's what basically happened. Now you're getting it. Now you're getting it. So you say, hey, what this verse actually means is this completely different thing. And they say, what are you talking yeah. about? 14 centuries of Muslim scholars have not concluded that. Ah, Ah, that's because I got the secret, the secret understanding that God gave me. Yes, now this you're getting exactly what you do. Almost as insane as Muhammad coming out in the seventh century and saying, uh, I'm getting revel revelations of from the same God who sent the Bible, mm -hmm. but I'm getting the true revelations. Mm -hmm. By the Holy Prophet Muhammad. His book titled Jesus in India detailed how Jesus of Nazareth had survived the crucifixion and passed away at a much later time. This meant that the second coming of the Messiah would be a spiritual second coming of Jesus, in his spirit and not of his body. And just like Jesus, he would be a non-law-bearing prophet. This was Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. He wrote a total of over 80 books and penned thousands of letters and lectures, all defending Islam and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And himself. His love for the Prophet was unmatched. He forgot to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What? He forgot to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whoa! Hang on, what? His love for the Prophet was unmatched. Oh, Muhammad is going to burn in hell now because this guy didn't say <laughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ooh! <laughs> Ooh, you guys are telling us you're the real Muslims. You're the real Muslims, and you don't even say uh, "Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam" every single time. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, my my my, I was I was defending you guys earlier, but my opinion of you just plummeted. How dare you? It's ridiculous, man. Yeah, now Muhammad's going to be suffering immensely in the afterlife because you didn't say it. He followed exactly the Islam of the Holy Prophet. Really? And hence, he was selected by God as the Messiah who came to revive the true Islam. He laid claim to hundreds of prophecies which came to fruition with stunning results. Look, Some of these, Muhammad including said. those... Hmm? Here's what Muhammad said according to the Hadith. May the man before whom I am mentioned and he does not send sell it upon me be humiliated. And may a man upon whom Ramadan enters and then he passes before he is forgiven be humiliated. And may a man whose parents reach old age in his presence and they were not at a cause for his entrance to paradise be humiliated. So if 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 Muhammad is mentioned and you don't you don't, you don't send salad upon him, then you will be humiliated. This dude didn't send salad on Muhammad at all. Well, he did, but I mean, he, gosh, man. Not every single time. So. Nope, 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 nope. This dude He's is been humiliated. He was humiliated right here, live, right in front of our faces.
Yeah. Around the World War One, the plague in prophecies. India, and a promised son who would have 52 great qualities. But don't just take my word for it. I encourage you to read the writings of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, may peace be upon him. We'll do Study his claims and his prophecies and find yes. out for yourself. Well, See, he's saying, look for yourself. Do your own research. See? Uh, I, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm help true. him right here. Guys, so this is uh, Ahmadiyat 101. Ahmadiyat, 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 Um There's the links right there. He just invited you. If you want to learn more, if you want to find this stuff out for yourself, there are the links on the screen. If you want to go check out that, check them out on YouTube, on Twitter. Uh, what's that other thing? Is that Instagram? What's that thing on the end? Yes, it looks like Instagram. a camera. That's yes, Instagram? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. And there you can slow, check I already, I already bought the Kindle version of uh, Barahina Ahmadiyya, Volume 1 to 5. Barahina Ahmadiyya. Ba, ba, I just Ahmadiyya, bought Barahina Ahmadiyya. Ba, ba, Ahmadiyya. All right. All right, guys. So now you have a, an overview of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Uh, I just want to see if there's anything else that's important. So born India... Debated children. Um, we've got the caliphate after him. About 10 to 20 million Ahmadis worldwide. Okay, we've got the basics of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Are you impressed yet? Anyone impressed yet? We're because we're about to look at we're about to take a closer look at some of their arguments. We're about to we just seen an overview and he kind of did some Ahmadi apologetics saying that there are all these fulfilled prophecies and so on. Um, I, I, I'm I'm I feel like I'm getting closer um, to being an Ahmadi to being a little bit impressed. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that these Ahmadis actually have some points. Yeah, Ahmadis are making some uh, good videos here. I'll take a couple yeah. super chats. See, see guys, we, we had a description of uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, and we got a little bit of apologetics, but we're actually going to look at a couple of their arguments here in a moment. Take a couple super chats so we don't get behind. Uh... Mr. Adios Mio, Mr. Adios Mio. Uh, when Muslims ask me how many rakats in wudu, I tell them zero. Then ask where the sun goes at night. They either ignore me or unknowingly <laughs> bunk Islam. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, plot twist, David Wood is an Ahmadi. That's true. That's why, that's why you always say Ahmadi like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Ahmadi, Grug, Grug Hamid Thump, Grug Hamid Thump, stick hard, we strong. Grug Hamid Thump, stick, we strong. <laughs> Is this the caveman thing? Grug Hamid Thump, stick hard, we strong. <laughs> I don't know if that's how I'm supposed to do that. but uh, Ahmadiyya are not Muslim, same as Alawites, Druze, Shia, Sufis, Aswajas, Barelvis, Diobandis, Wahhabi, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's kind it's, of yeah. my view. They're, I mean, they're they're sort of. I don't know if they are the most universally rejected sect uh, again, but they're about to brag about being the most rejected sect of Islam. So I'll take their word for it. But yeah, you can always, no matter which group you go to, you can always find millions of other Muslims who say those guys aren't Muslims. It's wild stuff. The funny thing is that um, it is it is a it is a joke about um, about cults and. Um, about cults that that, that 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 that's a common response if you um if you accuse them of being a cult will be um no we are not a cult those others they are cults and then um and when they are universally rejected what they will say is uh they are rejecting us because or obviously we are we are the right ones we are the correct ones and the, mm -hmm. the funny thing is that every every single movement says the very same things <laughs> isn't it wild see if they were if they were universally accepted they would say you see we're universally accepted this is the proof and if they're yeah. universally rejected they say you see we're universally rejected this is the proof and if they were yeah. uh, accepted by half and rejected by half they'd say you see we're evenly accepted and rejected this is the proof doesn't matter what yeah. 
It doesn't matter what the reality is. It's the proof. Mike Winger is the type of guy to say, he's right behind me, isn't he? In a horror movie. Yeah, that's when uh, like Jason or Freddy Krueger or something standing behind you and stuff. That is, a, that is totally a Mike Winger type thing to do. God bless your families and you both, David Wood and AP, for exposing, revealing Islam. Bought two of your Quran t-shirts. That's good. Everyone, everyone needs. It's the only way to keep the world safe is for everyone to have an awesome Quran t-shirt. Every man, That's woman, big. and child needs to be wearing a Quran t-shirt at all times. I think Israel plays a role in the last days. That is pretty reasonable. Israel is on a roll. Oh. So why do you all feel that Ahmadiyya are less Muslim than those who believe in Tahrif corruption? How do you feel Nabil would have reacted to the Nasser's? Hmm. If you're talking about corruption of the Bible, yeah, that's um, that's kind of an issue. If you can just reinterpret all these claims of Allah in the Quran and Muhammad in the Hadith, because Muhammad says that Jews and Christians still have the Torah and the Gospel. If you can just reinterpret all that and say, oh, when they say all these things, they mean something different. How do you then hold Ahmadis to this standard where they can't in, they can't reinterpret anything in the sources or this proves they're non-Muslims? How, like, how do you do that? And how do you feel Nabil would have reacted to the Nasser's? Uh, Nabil was on the aggressive side of the Ahmadi spectrum. So I think he would have been more comfortable with them uh, engaging in some mockery and so on than uh, some, some of the other Ahmadis back then. But I don't know. I don't know. That may be a direction that the, the Ahmadis are going in. And it might just be looking around at the world and thinking, ah, we got to be more aggressive. Or again, it could be this Muhammad hijab syndrome where everyone's realizing, hey, what really impresses the ummah is thumping your chest and boasting about how strong you are. Be strong. For a, uh, for a little bit, I was I, I was sitting here and thinking, what is Nasser's? And then I, and then it's, it's yeah, it's, the two it Nasser's. Dawns on me. The Nasser's. The two guys we debated. <laughs> Did we find out? Are they brothers or cousins or? I don't know. I think maybe maybe they are. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, one of them is actually quite quite nice in comparison to the other. The, the the I think the younger one or whatever, the one who is the psychology dude, he was generally nicer than the other. Tahir no, he was, was Nasser. the one. Who was, he, he was nice. Who was, he was Nasser. Yeah, yeah, he was Nasser. The the other one was, the other one was Tahir. He was very very, he was very rude. Rude. Hey guys, it's five thirty a.m. here, uh, Ridwan. I get it when you say you no longer disbelieve in God. We surgeons always end up praying in complicated cases, not to any particular deity, but to the concept of a higher power. That's based. Well, it makes sense if you're a surgeon. You're like, uh, <laughs> it's a situation where okay, I'll pray. If it doesn't do anything, okay, I'm no worse off. But if it does, eh, you know, give me a little help here. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, we're about to go back to read one more, and then we'll go back to uh, another video. More powerful stuff about Ahmadis. Uh, about yesterday's cosmic police officer, I think it also has a lot about choices. The hypothetical thief hates the character of the officer. The officer hates stealing. I don't think they want to be together in the same kingdom. We will be exploring these ideas further in the future. When he has me on his channel show how uh, completely absurd it is to reject the gospel. All right, ready? Um, yeah, ready do, 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 you, do you see what's happening in France, by the way? I have no um, idea what's happening in France. I know they got the Olympics coming up. No, in France they are they are having uh, early on early uh, election thingies because um, recently there were the European. Uh, elections and in the European elections. Um, you mean the European the, the, Union or? Yeah, the European Union okay. elections. Um, so, and, and in in the EU elections, the um, in France, lots of people voted for the for the for the right for Marine Le Pen, um, who is very 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 new right and nationalist, anti-Islam, anti-immigration, Eurosceptic, and also pro-Israel here in this case. And um, they they received quite high votes. And then as it is tradition, it, um, uh, it was said, okay, it looks like things are not uh, very much the way they were uh, when, the, when our last elections happened. Therefore, we should have elections again. So now there are presidential elections and 
I think first round or whatever, uh, 38% or so um, Marine Le Pen's party is ahead. And it looks like they are going to really take control of France. And in response to this, lots of um, communist, anarchist, and Muslim protesters are yeah. out there. Yeah, while you're talking, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, because whenever they don't get their way, they, they start burning cities to the ground. So yeah 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 or there are there are polls that say that i'm, I'm not i'm not entirely sure where at which at which part of the process it is right now but oh no first round uh far right leads first round of france's parliamentary election mm. <laughs> far right mm. yeah interesting interesting uh actually two more here these are quick uh hatoon could seriously be a deadpan comedian Queer Muslims at DCCI Ministries need rewriting for stand-up takedown of Muhammad Winger to uh, our 20 by Scholastic Answers. Um, yeah, no, Hatun's hilarious. Hatun, Hatun's hilarious. Um, but on the issue of uh, queer Muslims, uh, I was just talking to AP <laughs> right before we started about... Because uh, <laughs> we're heading to Ohio for the conference and to do some uh, video recordings, but since... Me and AP and vocab are all going to be there. It was uh, okay. Maybe we should do a, an episode of the Boom Boom Room. What would be most relevant? And actually, people were requesting Muhammad meets queers for Palestine. So I think me and AP may have to dress up. <laughs> may have to dress up uh, as the group Queers for Palestine. And I'm thinking. I'm thinking the joke would be that. Uh, Muhammad would start off and say, Hey, why are you guys supporting me? And I just want to execute you. And then it will go into them saying, come on, we know you're, we know you're one of us. And then reading passages about semen all over him and stuff like that. Diha El Kalbi, uh, Muhammad letting that guy kiss him all up and down his milky white flesh and so on. And then... He, after that, he'll start talking about liking little girls and sucking on the tongues of little boys, and they'll they'll be like, "We're gays, not groomers," and uh, and then he'll blow them up. <laughs> it's beast. That would be kind of funny. Yeah. So, so yeah, we'll be seeing some of that. Don't forget, R. Kelly fell like a star onto all those little girls like Muhammad, and R. Kelly did golden showers. You see, Islam is powerful. Yes. How could how could Muhammad have known about those things all? All those centuries ago about falling stars. We also have we also have Muhammad meets R. Kelly coming out in the Boom Boom Room. Already recorded it. Already recorded it. All right. You ready to jump into a video? Yes. Prepare to have your mind blown, AP. Yes. This is uh, by the same channel, but this is defending the claim that Ahmadiyya Islam is true. Here we go. Ahmadiyya, 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 Ahmadiyya. The number one proof for the truthfulness of Ahmadiyya. The central belief of Ahmadi Muslims is that the Messiah awaited by the world religions has finally appeared in light of the prophecies foretold about the Messiah to come in the latter days. The fact that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, peace be upon him, appeared at a time which fulfilled all the criterions for the foretold Messiah and the Mahdi is the number one proof for the He fulfilled all the signs for the latter day Messiah. Why did they go with latter day? I mean, that's like straight Mormonism right there. Guys, I'm trying to explain that you're not like, you're not the parallel to Mormons and you guys are calling yourselves the latter day, I don't know of his message and mission today known as Ahmadiyyat. Now let's take a look at just some of the criterions right now. The first criterion is the time that he appeared. The time when the promised Messiah appeared was not an ordinary age. Almost every single religion was waiting for a chosen one of God who would come and save the sinking ship of mankind. You hear that, AP? What sinking the, ship? Man? The timing was correct. The proof. So he's going to, guys, keep in mind, this is about the proof that Ahmadiyya Islam is true, that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is the promised Messiah. And this guy leads out with the time. This was a time when various religions are all waiting for someone. Okay, was that, was that not true in the 1700s, in the 1600s, in the 1500s, in the 1400s? 
in the 1300s, in the 1200s? Is that not true in the 21st century? Really, that specific time, that time, the 1800s, that was the time when everyone's just waiting. So that specific time. That's what he just argued. Just argued that specific time was the time when everyone's waiting for this guy. And then this guy, doing- this guy comes out of some weird, you know, some remote village in uh, Punjab, India. No. That? I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, that I specifically a while ago looked into um, such expectations throughout history, and it has been consistently the same thing. It wasn't special in, in Mirza Ghulam Ahmed's time. It was the same thing for centuries and more. So, Yeah, so, all right. Swing and a miss on that one, buddy. Swing and a miss on that one. Um, matter of fact, let me go and read a quick passage here. Uh, Matthew 24, this is Jesus speaking. So this is Jesus talking, talking about false Christs and false messiahs, false, I mean, false messiahs, false prophets, things like that. Uh, Matthew 24, 23 to 25. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ or there he is, do not believe it for false, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. So Jesus' warning is that false Christs, false prophets are going to come and lead many astray. Think about that. If we were to apply Ahmadi reasoning to this, it's look, false pro- false Christs, false prophets are going to arise and they're going to lead, lead many astray. They're going to lead many people astray. Look, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed had 400,000 followers by the time of his death. See, that's a guy who led people astray. Peace. Swing and a miss, dude. Adherents of Abrahamic religions were waiting for a Messiah to appear close to some 1400 years after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, it was also foretold that the Messiah would appear in a town called Qada. You see any references, AP? Nope. The Messiah would appear in a town hall called Qada. Are you looking that up? Are you looking up that prophecy? Yes. Um, Nope. Nothing so far. Nothing so far. Dear Ahmadis, Ahmadis, uh, can you please give us a reference for that, an authentic reference where we can see if that is actually the case or not? Because I can't find anything like that. Or is this guy just making it up? I don't know. That's what I'm wondering. I always appreciate references, and I always know notice that Ahmadis are, I mean, it's a problem with Islamic apologetics in general that they don't like to give references but they especially, Ahmadis especially, like to just, well, you can read an entire book at, and making all these claims and arguments and not get a single reference where you can look anything up. Nope, no reference at all. And Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, say, my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. So if you were to read this, if you were to read this and apply it to, to Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, hey, he's, he came along, he said, I am the Christ, and he led many astray. Perfect fulfillment. I would say more accurate fulfillment than anything these guys are using. The Messiah would appear in a town called Qadha. All right, let's see what his defense is. Maybe maybe it was Mirza Ghulam Ahmed himself who said that the Messiah would appear in town called Qadha. Yes, it's my secret knowledge of Islam. <laughs> it was forgotten, but there was a prophecy from Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said... <laughs> Here we go. ...appear in a town called Qadha. Today we know that the promised Messiah appeared 1400 years after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in a town known as Qadhiyan, which was previously called Ghazi. Yasirka. Another criterion, is from. the second criterion, was dissension and turmoil within the Muslim Ummah and faithlessness at large. 
It is clear to see that the India which received the advent of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad consisted of religious turmoil like never before. The Muslims were at a loss within themselves and also with those who ruled their lands. The situation was no different for the Hindus and the Sikhs. The Christian oh. state, on the other hand, had adopted a Trinitarian stance, which was the oh. sole reason the Antichrist's when, when arrival was... What's that? When, when does that happen? Yeah, guys, a good little a good little test here is uh, listen to what this guy just said. What did he just? <laughs> guys, just think about uh, think now. Well, I just paused it there. Think, what did he just argue? <laughs> what did he just argue, and what was the evidence? That's so stupid. Something about there would be turmoil. Oh, gee. <laughs> right then, eh? <laughs> yeah. Right then, there was the, there was the turmoil. <laughs> All right. Great evidence. Guys, this is a video trying to prove that this is that Ahmadiyya Islam is true. Also expected according to the prophecies. This was when the promised Messiah arrived. Now, lastly... Can, 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 can you go back a few a few seconds in that, huh. in that video can where he I? talks about uh, Trinitarian? I'll back it up even more because I asked people what he said and what his actual evidence was. I'll back it all the way up so we can hear it again. The dissension of the Ummah. Dissension in the Ummah. It is clear to see that the India which received the advent of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad consisted of religious turmoil like never before. The Muslims were at a loss within themselves and also with those who ruled their lands. The situation was no different for the Hindus and the Sikhs. The Christian state, on the other hand, had adopted a Trinitarian stance which was the sole reason the Antichrist's arrival was also expected according to the prophecies. This was when the uh, the I, antichrist I the antichrist's arrival was expected. Uh, AP, you you've studied this. When has the antichrist's arrival not been expected? Never. It was expected in the time of Muhammad himself. In fact, we have authentic hadiths in which uh, Muhammad himself talks about the uh, antichrist, the Dajjal possibly being around and we have authentic narrations where his uh, dear helper and friend and second caliph Umar explicitly suspects um, an adolescent of being <laughs> the Dajjal, the Antichrist and Muhammad does not deny it. He says he doesn't know whether, if, whether it is true or not uh, but he fears that it might be true. So Muhammad himself expected during his lifetime the coming of the Dajjal, the Antichrist, the Islamic version of it. And consistently since then, Muslims expected the very same thing in every single generation. In fact, we have we even have a hadith which says that, um, I'm reading it right now, Sahih Muslim, Abdullah said that five signs have uh, become things of the past. Uh, the smoke, which is one of the big signs of the end of uh, of, of the of the day of judgment, the punishment of the, uh, of Badr, the victory in Rome, and the seizing of uh, the moon, the splitting of the moon. So this means, according to this hadith, this guy is saying that the signs of the end have already begun appearing, and some have already passed. So any time now, the end times will be, will will start. Any time now, the Dajjal will descend, and all the bad things will be happening. So they have been thinking this for forever. This is nothing new. Yeah, and so a couple more issues. Just uh, Ahmadi Islam is sort of a India centric. Like, notice all the things about, look at all these things going on in India. I was like, okay, there's things going on all around the world. Why Why India? Why is India the special spot where there's this? And and when is there not turmoil in India, right? I mean, of all this stuff. You had the Muslim invasions and so on. Then you had, then you had the European nations, they come over and so on. There's all this stuff going on. Why are you saying, oh, look at the turmoil of that? That's, that's the fulfillment of the prophecy. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Uh, but if you, here's the thing: you can sit, you can sit a group of Ahmadis down here watching this, and they'd be going, "Oh my goodness, this is it's so my God, How could this? How is this possible? It was the perfect time, right there in the sec, in the second half of the the 1800s. It's oh my goodness, there was turmoil there. There was turmoil. When has there not been turmoil? 
Ne- and the turmoil the point, is going on right now. The point it's going is, on right now. Oh, you no. could have you could have some guy claiming to be the Christ and put him at any point in all of history and say, "Oh, but look at this thing that was going on in the world at that time." Yeah, guess what? There's always something going on in the world. So you'd have to be a little more explicit on what the evidence is here. Promised Messiah arrived. Now, lastly. Among others, the third criterion for the arrival of the Messiah and the Mahdi were heavenly signs. These numbered greatly, but one prominent heavenly sign was the appearance of the solar and lunar eclipses in the month of Ramadan. This indeed happened in the lifetime of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Well, hold on, hold on. Can't you look at a list and... Can't I pull up a list right now and tell you every single solar and lunar eclipse for the next 10,000 years if I want to? <laughs> <sighs> okay, so supposedly, ladies and gentlemen, Thales, Thales, the it was considered the first philosopher. Um, Thales supposedly predicted a solar eclipse just by looking at the motions of the sun way back in the day. That's impressive. That's impressive uh, because one, they, they didn't they didn't have just uh, you know tables of here's when the the solar eclipses are going to happen. This guy's supposed to, and keep in mind, I'm not, in, I'm not sure that he actually did this. This is the story. The story is that he accurately predicted when a solar eclipse is going to happen. And there are philosophers who date that prediction from as the dawn of philosophy, a guy who's actually figuring out the world. Um, that is impressive. If it's true, that is very impressive. Would that make me conclude that he's a prophet? No. But if a guy in the 1800s says, here's when a solar eclipse is going to happen, <laughs> That's not impressive to me one bit, because by then you could predict solar eclipses. Um, <clears throat> this is the proof. This is the proof. All right. On whom be peace in 1894 and 1895, respectively. The promised Messiah refers to this great sign by simply saying, if anyone can historically show otherwise, I shall accept it. Now, these show are just some of the criterions that were fulfilled. Show what otherwise? Show that an eclipse didn't happen? I don't know what to do here, man. With the advent of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad proving with greatness that he indeed was the awaited Messiah and Mahdi. Today, his followers, known as Ahmadi Muslims, continue to propagate his message and are spreading in their millions across the world. All right, and once again, if you want more information there, you have it right there. Powerful, powerful stuff. Are you impressed, AP, yet? I don't know I honestly before watching this I I thought of Ahmadiyya as just a a silly sect that is t- totally detached from Islam itself which is already false anyway but after watching this I don't know I I I I I clearly can't hide how, how impressed I am and how amazed I am actually this is this seems to me to be the most uh, enlightened perspective coming out of an of an islamic movement and it does make me want to question everything and reconsider islam and specifically consider following the prophet mirza gulam ahmed and so all you ahmadis and muslims and non-muslims heard it here this is AP's official response to these powerful, powerful Ahmadi missionary videos. He's basically in tears right now. But AP, we're not even done. You're about to get a more powerful case. And even so more? this would this is probably what's going to push you over the edge. It's going to push you over the edge. To finally believe. Find a it's too much. It's too Take much a couple super that. chats. Uh Jubaka says, CP said something about MGA dying of diarrhea. Oh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed dying of diarrhea. I don't know. I know he was old. It's a so lie. I don't know. It's a lie. And so what if he did? I might die like that. Hey, look, he wrote letters. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's about him writing letters. <laughs> and he hmm. even wrote a letter to Queen Victoria. How is this possible if he were not the promised Messiah? 
I once wrote I once wrote a letter to I once wrote a letter to Queen Elizabeth II asking for her help in getting justice against some corrupt and evil people and she basically ignored me. Does that make me the Mahdi as well? Yes. yes. You wrote a letter, so that's criterion 1, and criterion 2, she rejected you. So you've been rejected. This is the proof. So you are indeed the Mahdi. The fact that nobody believes you just shows that you are the true one. <laughs> Do you think if Jesus himself returned, we might all dismiss his claims to be the Messiah and maybe even kill him again? Well, when Jesus returns, I don't think he'll be the sort of person you're going to kill. You need to check out the Mahdi has appeared on YouTube. Is that an Ahmadi thing? or I mean, it would fit with the Ahmadi belief, but is that, the, uh, is that an Ahmadi site or... Something else. You looking it up, AP? Yes. The Mahdi has appeared. See if that's an Ahmadi site. And if so, see how many people watch the channel. Me strunk, me smartest, me clothes crusty. Yes. And, and researchers have shown that just like Prophet Muhammad, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed walked around with semen all over his clothes. This is the proof, the proof. What in the world is this? I don't know. You guys are so prolific making videos almost every night. I never finish reading my critical Quran. I'll go back to having my mind blown by this falafel sandwich. Oh, okay. It is, Maybe it is her mind was blown by a falafel sandwich. <laughs> the website, uh, that there's a link to website, which literally is called the Ahmadi religion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's an Ahmadi site. Uh, do you see uh, what kind of views they get on their videos? Um, it has 50,000 subscribers. Oh, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big channel by, uh, Ahmadi's standards. So yeah, maybe we will check like that stuff out. 5,000, 10,000 on one month old videos. That's I don't, I don't know if this is actually Ahmadiyya, but it's, it's, or if this is something like a commentary. I, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Is. We'll check it. We'll check stuff out. If the blacks, are, because we have a debate next month with Ahmadis as well. So the topic of Ahmadi Islam is going to return. If the black stone was white and turned black because of sins, why did Muhammad, I mean Aisha's burqa, turn? Why did Muhammad, I mean Aisha's burqa, turn white, or was it yellow and slippery? That's one of life's great mysteries. Ahmadiyya, 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 Ahmadiyya. Powerful, powerful. Will Guillaume ever come on your channel? Do you mean the translator of Ibn Asak or Guillaume Bignon, the Frenchman? I assume you're talking about the Frenchman. Yeah, if I ever want him on here, I'm not sure that I will, because French people really annoy me with their stupid accents. Check out the Mahdi has appeared. Hey, we already saw that. Hi, AP. What do you think about Diamond T... Diamond Tima? What's that? That's the that's the guy who was um, who recently had a um, an, an arrest warrant issued against him because we talked about him that mm. long hair guy in Turkey because he because he had a debate about Sharia and wait Turkey said, you mean the place with the highest promiscuity rate on the planet with donkeys yeah um, that's yes that place yeah yeah um, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't have much, I don't think much of that guy. Hey, this is, uh, this is actually uh, an important point here. If you can say Abraham, Moses, and Jesus were Muslims, I don't know why one can't say Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was a Muslim too, and also a Palestinian. <laughs> <laughs> ser seriously, those Muslims will say Jesus was a Muslim. You say, why? Oh, because he, you know, he, he. He, he bowed and prayed. You see, this is the proof. And you say, wait a minute, here's, here's him looking up to heaven and praying. Here's him referring to God as Father. Here's him describing himself repeatedly as the Son of God. How is he a Muslim? So, oh, you know, as long as he prayed, that's enough. That's enough for him to be a Muslim. Okay, how are yeah. you ruling out Mirza Ghulam Ahmed? <laughs> like, how? How? If you, can, if you can look at someone who, according to Islam, would violate basic Islamic teachings in 487 different ways, and say, nope, they're still a Muslim because they did this one thing. Okay, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed did that one thing and like a thousand others that are all Islamic. And you're going to say, no, but he did this one thing that rules him out. This is just weird stuff, man. 
It's weird stuff. Yeah. But that's a good point. That should be brought up repeatedly. That's a weird stuff, but that's a good point, yeah. Yep, yep. And Heisenberger, is it possible for an ethnic Jew to convert to Islam according to Muhammad, Muslims, uh, Allah, or are they automatically damned to hell from birth? Oh, no, of course, of course, of course, Jews can convert to Islam. They, they even have a story about a, a guy named Abdullah who, yeah. was, who was a Jew during the time of Muhammad and converted. Yeah. So, yes, you can convert. Uh, the Muslims in the chat are so mad at Ahmadis. Are they? I haven't been paying much attention to the uh, to the chat. Ahmadis are beasts. Are Muslims in the chat mad at Ahmadis for being so base and for having such powerful arguments? Because Mus because Ahmadis are chads and Muslims are jealous. Yeah, they're they're looking at they're looking at the Ahmadis and they're saying, "Look at these guys. They're the guys facing David Wood and the apostate prophet in public debate, unlike our." Our debaters who would never in a million years defend Muhammad in a public debate. It's the Ahmadis who are actually standing on the front lines defending Muhammad. Average Dawah guy won't come within a thousand miles. Miles? They wouldn't come within a thousand light years of defending Muhammad in a public debate. They wouldn't do it. You, you can occasionally find a, a Dawah guy to you know, defend Islamic theology or something like that against Christian theology or something like that. But defending Muhammad? Not coming near it. Ahmadis do. So maybe they are the true Muslims who are willing to defend Muhammad. Inshallah. Uh, all right. One one more real quick. Uh, and then we'll jump back into another video clip where AP's mind is going to be blown even more when he sees the two most powerful proofs that Ahmadi Islam is true. I asked my ex-Muslim friend today, what does Allahu Akbar actually mean? It means Allah is greater. It has two meanings, he replied. The first meaning is God is great, actually greater. And the second, I asked him, run like hell, he smiled. That's what it generally means to everyone else. So he gave you the two meanings, what it means for Muslims and what it means to everyone else in the world. Like, if, uh, seriously, you're in a mall and you're like, what are you doing? You're bolting, right? You're bolting. You're not thinking, oh, it's great. He's proclaiming the, the unity of God. No, 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 no. Um, oh, wait, one more. Amen. Amen. David Wood on Matthew 24, 4 to 5. How can we trust the 66 books of the Holy Scriptures? Look at all the prophecies that have been fulfilled. Yeah, that's that's what's that's what's interesting. If you wanted to say, if you wanted to say, if you wanted to say, if you wanted to say that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed had to be the Messiah because he's the fulfillment of a prophecy. No, Jesus is the one who talked about false prophets and false messiahs coming along and deceiving many. So you might want to say, okay, that's that's Jesus who was making the accurate prophecy there, not Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. All right, let's... Uh, many such cases. Let's check out the most powerful, the two most powerful... And irrefutable, that's their title, irrefutable proofs, irrefutable proofs that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is the promised Messiah. Seven irrefutable proofs that Ahmed, peace be upon him, was the promised Messiah and Imam Mahdi. We're just going to look at the first two, their strongest. Notice what they're calling this, irrefutable proofs, irrefutable proofs. You see, David is scared. He doesn't want to look at all of them. He only wants to look at the first two. Oh, 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 Stop it. It doesn't help. Number it one, help. surviving and thriving after his claim. Multi Sound familiar, AP? Oh, God. Let me back this up. Back this thing up. Hang on, hang on. Oh, Number one, surviving. Surviving, surviving and thriving after his claim. So here we're going to get the interesting Ahmadi argument that if you claim to be a prophet and God doesn't kill you, then you're a true prophet, which would make thousands of people true prophets and true messiahs. But we'll just ignore that for now. Surviving and thriving after his claim. Multiple scriptures, including the Quran and the Bible, give the divine promise that any person who falsely claims revelation from God to mislead people will die a violent death. In oh, that's not what it says. Not what it says at all. <laughs> at all. Nope. Not, not what, what it, it says, says at all. It no such thing anywhere at all. Nowhere does it say anything. Anywhere. Nope. But we'll nope. see. So... Guys, this is what they call an irrefutable proof. Their, their view of an irrefutable proof is let's take a passage from the Quran or the Bible 
twist the meaning completely or ignore or ignore what actually happens and then declare based on our completely absurd reading of the sources that no sane person who's not bound to interpret things in a fashion that Ahmadis are interpreting them, no one who's already bound to Ahmadi Islam would ever interpret these passages in a million years. You could line up a thousand people, say, read these passages. Is that what they mean? They would never conclude that's what they mean. And this is how they start. This is the foundation. The foundation of Ahmadi arguments are complete misreadings of simple passages. Uh, but they can't get around it because it comes from their leaders. In other words, be killed. The Quran says in reference to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And if he had forged and attributed any sayings to us, we would surely have seized him by the right hand. And then surely we would have severed his life artery. And not one of you could have held our punishment off from him. And so what am I saying they have ignored here? If you want to take this as a prophecy that if Muhammad were to deliver a false prophecy, uh, if he were a false prophet, Allah would kill him. We just can't ignore the fact that according to Muhammad himself, he died saying that he could feel his aorta being severed, his life artery being severed. Verse 47, then surely we would have severed his life artery. Muhammad died, that's the aorta. Muhammad died saying, I feel my aorta being severed. This is the proof. This is where they go with this. This is where they go with this as their proof, as their main proof, as their lead, as their lead off argument. Just as those who are truly from God receive God's support and help to achieve their purpose, those who falsely claim God's authority are destroyed by him. While the verse ostensibly refers to the pro little problem we won't go into here, but maybe in the future, the Quran is filled with passages about true prophets being killed by yeah. people. So he, according to according to this guy, according to this guy, they were all false prophets who were killed because yes. Allah would have protected them from being killed. And if he doesn't, then he's impotent. This is this. I might make a separate little video because this. Sh if you wanted to argue that they're not Muslims, it would be this sort of disrespect for even the Quran that they exhibit. But Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, it has also been unanimously agreed throughout the history of Islam by scholars and their commentaries to apply by matter of principle to any individual falsely claiming divine revelation. Do you hear this? Do you hear what he just said? He just hmm. said that passage in Surah 69 has been universally, let's go back and see what he said, that all Muslim scholars have acknowledged that this is a true principle that applies to anyone, that anyone who claims to be a prophet and isn't one will be killed. Where's the sauce? Read the throughout source? the history. Hmm? Source, no source. Yeah, so we had Surah 69. What's your source on saying all Muslim scholars have agreed on this? Let's see what he says again, just in case I misheard that. ...of Islam by scholars and their commentaries. Okay. It has also been unanimously agreed throughout unanimously. the history of Islam by scholars and their commentaries to apply by matter of principle to any individual falsely claiming divine revelation. He just said that, right? It's been yeah. unanimously agreed by Muslim scholars that this applies to anyone, that anyone who claims to be a prophet and isn't will be killed. And hence, if you're not killed, it means you're a true prophet. He's saying that's that's been universally, universally, unanimously agreed upon by Muslim scholars. <laughs> Their reasoning is that if God is willing to destroy his most beloved servant, the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, for lying in God's name, then why would he spare anyone else for the same? Since the Their reasoning? I've never heard that reasoning from anyone but you guys. I've never heard that reasoning from anyone but you guys. Let me, let me read something here. Um, let me read Quran chapter uh, 3, verse 21. It literally says the following. It's very short. Those who disbelieve in the signs of Allah and kill the prophets without right and kill those who order justice from among the people, give them tidings of a painful punishment. And further, it says Killing in Quran chapter 2, verse 61 it says that was because they repeatedly disbelieved in the signs of allah and killed the prophets unjustly uh -huh. this is this oh. is my pro this is my problem ladies and gentlemen i mean he's sitting here 
they give these passages an interpret an interpretation. They'll say, hey, this is unanimous. This is unanimous. If someone claims to be a prophet and isn't one, he's going to be killed. And if he claims to be a prophet and is a true prophet, Allah is going to protect him and not, not allow him to die. And the Quran is filled with passages about prophets dying and being killed. And so it's like, do you not do you lack that basic knowledge of your own book? And so they're they're declaring that every prophet has been killed is, is a false. This is just insane, man. This is insane. The length of the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, after his first revelation was approximately 23 years. It is generally taken that no individual falsely claiming revelation without retracting it can live for a period longer than 23 years without. <laughs> Do you hear this? Do you hear what he what? just said? It's generally taken. By who? <laughs> Show us someone who thinks this. So since Muhammad, from the first revelation right. to his death, lived 23 years, therefore it's taken as a principle, a general rule in Islam, that anyone who claims to be a prophet and isn't one will not survive 23 years. I will re refute this right now. I will present absolute proof right now, irrefutable proof that this is not tr true. Okay? I will present irrefutable truth, proof that this is not true. So I recently talked to a, um, uh, several years ago, I talked to, to a guy who is, uh, wh whose name is Hassan Mezarje in Turkish. And he is, um, he, 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 he declared way back in the day i'm trying to find when exactly he did it but he declared way back in the day that uh, oh yeah he, he declared in 2000 in, in the year 2000 i have it in the year 2000 he declared that he is the messiah that he is the second coming of jesus well he must be dead by now he, that he is here to deliver the true message of Allah, which people have unfortunately misunderstood and, dis and distorted. And he even uh, wrote a, a book, which is which is called, I think, Signs or something like that. I, I, I talked to him. You can actually find the dis discussion uh, in Turkish um, on this uh, channel b back then. It, it's called... Uh, Atheist uh, Federation, Atheism Derni in Turkish. So you, you can find it there. I talked to that guy live on screen several years ago. He is still alive. He's still around. I was about to ask still, you when he died. He's still alive. Still alive. Wait. He even tweets. He's even on Twitter. And he even tweets. And uh, he, he was seen on Turkish national TV. He was a politician back when he declared that he is the Messiah. So uh, this is not some obscure little guy. This is actually somebody that lots of people have seen. And he was he was, he was uh, part of a very significant national Turkish TV show where he declared that he is the Messiah and he receives revelations from Allah uh, and, and that he is actually uh, the son of Allah and so on. Um, he, he was kind of kicked out of Turkey for different offenses, but um, he is alive. And he has been alive for now 24 years. Since calling himself <clears throat> the Messiah. Yes. So, AP, according to what these guys just said, he is the Messiah. Yes. Because if he weren't the Messiah, Allah would have killed him within 23 years. Yes. This directly proves... <laughs> One of two things, that this guy that I'm talking about, and you can Google him, Hassan Mezarji, uh, um, that he is the Messiah, or it proves that this supposed irrefutable uh, proof by these Ahmadi nuts people is complete nonsense. Yeah, so this is an additional pattern within Islam. That you ask, hey, what's the evidence for this? And because they don't actually have any evidence, they'll say something that could that could apply to tons of other people. Like when Muhammad Hijab, when Muhammad Hijab, he, his two arguments, he gave two main arguments when he was asked, what's the proof that Muhammad is a prophet? His, his number one was Muhammad preached monotheism. Okay, so tons of people after the time of Muhammad have preached monotheism. Would Muhammad Hijab declare that any of them are prophets? No, not one. So is it really evidence that someone is a prophet if they preach monotheism? No. That's the point. His evidence that Muhammad is a prophet is something that he would reject from anyone else, which means it's, he doesn't really consider it evidence. His number two argument 
pun intended. His number two argument was Muhammad's character, right? Now, keep in mind, this is a guy who had sex with a nine-year-old girl and took the wife of his own adopted son and so on. So you want, sit back and wonder, what is it in Muhammad's character that proves that he's a prophet? Seriously, think, what could you actually say? Like legitimately, even if, even if you're a Muslim, what can you actually say about Muhammad's character that means that he's a prophet? And if you were to ask a Muslim that, hey, what, what is it about Muhammad's character that, me, that shows that he's, his character was so great, he must be a prophet? What you're going to get is something, called, oh, but he said help orphans and widows and things like that. You go, wait a minute, millions of people have said that. Is that evidence that they're a prophet? No, it's no evidence at all. And so they, they're, so, they're so intent and desperate to prove that their guy is a true prophet, that they'll say absolutely anything about him and then say, this is the proof. When you point out, wait a minute, that would make all these other people prophets, suddenly it doesn't matter. But it's the same thing here. He if Anyone who survives 23 years after claiming to be a prophet has to be a true prophet. Why are you saying that? Because we need something to defend this guy. We have to defend this guy somehow. We're going to say that that's our proof. Okay, you just proved that, a ton, that tons of other people are true prophets. Do you accept them? No. So is that really a good argument? No, it's a terrible argument. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible argument. And this, just, is, uh, this is what they call irrefutable, irrefutable proofs. Go ahead, AP. I, I just sent you the link uh, on, on Twitter uh, as a message and also posted it here in the chat. I posted the link to the to the guy's Twitter page that, I was, that I'm talking about. And you can see it right there. I didn't even notice uh, the guy has, the guy who, de who declared himself Messiah, apparently not even in 2000, uh, he, uh, it was in the year 1997. Um, <laughs> he has 136,000 followers on Twitter. So the guy is not some 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 nobody. He's all out there, and he survived longer than Muhammad. So what are we supposed to do with this information? He has to be the Messiah. So guys, think about this. <laughs> their lead-off argument, and one of their main arguments that they use, one of their main arguments, they used, they used the same oh. argument when they were debating us. They used the same argument. They go to a passage, they say, here's what this means, right? So they, they go to the Quran and say, here, Allah says that he would he would kill, he would would kill sever Muhammad's aorta uh, if he's a false prophet. And then they leave out the part where Muhammad says, as he's dying, that he feels his aorta being severed. They go to Deuteronomy 18.20 and say, if a prophet uh, delivers a revelation that doesn't come from God, that prophet shall die, which, as we showed in the debate, that's actually... That's actually talking about capital punishment for false prophets who are leading people astray. Uh, they interpret that as God will kill him, which is obviously not what the obviously indisputably not what the passage means. So they start off with uh, passages that they completely misinterpret, or by leaving out information that shows that Muhammad was a false prophet. And then on top of that, and then they'll using this, using this, they'll come up with a rule. That means that their guy's a true prophet, but not realizing that they just made thousands and thousands of other people true prophets that they would reject, that they would reject all of them. This is like, they're like multiple layers of insanity and stupidity to this argument. This is their main argument that they start off with in this video. Stupid. It's pretty bad, pretty bad, pretty, pretty bad. Divine retribution ending the person in a violent manner. This divine principle is also alluded to in Deuteronomy 18.20 of the Bible, albeit with less detail, where it says, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Here again, notice what I just said about the, about the, uh, the other passage. You're giving it a, a meaning that doesn't seem to be intended. Although I think you have, I think you have a case that Surah 69 is saying that if Muhammad comes up with a revelation, then he will uh, die in a certain way or something like that. If you wanted to make that case, great. It happens to be exactly the way he said he was dying. Uh, but this passage, this isn't saying at all that God's going to kill the person. It's, 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 an, it's a command to the children of Israel to execute a false prophet who does these things. Uh, but anyway, they massacre the meaning of the text. I mean, just completely distort it give it a completely ridiculous interpretation, and then ignore the fact that Muhammad actually meets the requirements of a false prophet in this passage. This is where the satanic verses come in. If you speak a word in the name of God, which God didn't actually command him, which is exactly what Muhammad says. Guys, it's the history of At-Tabari, volume six, page 111. Muhammad says that 
He has fabricated revelations against God and has imputed to him words which he hasn't spoken. It's exactly what it says makes you a false prophet here. And he spoke in the name of Allah, Alusim, and not. Or that shall speak in the name of other gods. They don't mention any of that stuff. And then they conclude based on this that God is saying that if someone doesn't isn't killed by God, then he's a true prophet. And up, oh, Merzagulam Ahmed lived to be an old man, so he must be a true prophet. Along with thousands and thousands of other people. Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, we, we talked about, we countered them on this on this one and uh, very much uh, showed and uh, let, me, let me just use their language, right? We have uh, we have presented irrefutable proof that this uh, does not say that Allah will violently kill them. This, uh, we, we have actually proven that this just uh, is a command to kill that false prophet. In fact, um, I also appeal to the Talmud to show that this was the early understanding of, of, of Jews who read the passage, uh, Deuteronomy 18.20. And then we also have the Christian understanding. So uh, in the Talmud, I, I specifically went to it. I mean, this is, this is so clear that uh, you can find references to it uh, in the Sanhedrin 2a11. For example, it says that specifically because it is specified here where God um, commands the uh, the execution of somebody who presumes to speak in his name and is a false prophet. Uh, this is one of those cases where the execution must be done in such and such w way if there is a court present. Um, so th f from, the, from the beginning, nobody has understood this to be uh, to mean that, oh, God himself will smite them in a violent way. No. Traditionally, everybody reading this understood this as a command for the people to stop such a prophet. But somehow, somehow, thousands of years later, the Ahmadis come and, are like, and, 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 and say, no, uh, everybody got this wrong. Everybody misunderstood this. We have the real meaning. We can tell you the real meaning. We can tell you that this actually means that Allah will kill a false prophet. And everybody agrees with us, by the way. Although we just said everybody got it wrong. This is so stupid, man. <laughs> this is pretty, pretty terrible. Guys, this is bad. This is bad. And the, pro and the fact that this is standard reasoning in the Ahmadi community is a problem. When you argue like this... Stupid. When, you, when you're bringing up passages, which, if you take them seriously, mean that Muhammad is a false prophet... You ignore those parts, and then you come up with an absurd interpretation of them, and then you come up with a general rule that if we took you seriously would make all kinds of other people prophets, and you don't accept them as prophets, it's like impossible to take you seriously. Ahmed, peace be upon him, claimed divine revelation in 1876, but he did not die a violent death. Rather, he died a natural death, a full 31 years later in 1908. Thus, this is a ma You guys catching this? He claimed to be a prophet in 1876. He died 31 years later. This is their main proof that they're leaving that they're leading out with that shows that he's a true prophet. He survived 31 years. Guess what? Go to a list. You can look up people who claim to be the Messiah or claim to be prophets in the 20th century, in the 19th century, and so on. Look up people who claim to be prophets and, and messiahs. Anyone who lived over 23 years is, according to this guy's argument, a true prophet. But if you ignore those, then, 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 then he's right. Mm -hmm. Sign of his truth. For if he was a false claimant of revelation, God forbid, divine justice would have seized him and he would have been killed prior to 23 years elapsing from his claim. He could not have died of natural causes 31 years later. Those who refuse to acknowledge this sign of the truth of Ahmed, peace be upon him, and still stubbornly call him false, appear to consider Allah the Exalted indolent and incapable well, of keeping his own promises, God forbid. Well, well, well that, this means you, that, I to go and, that I have to go and follow this Turkish Messiah now. Yeah, you have to. I mean, think, think what he just said. If you reject Mirza Ghulam Ahmed after realizing that he survived 31 years after claiming to be a prophet, if you reject him after that, you're accusing Allah of being a total joke. 
This is so dumb, man. You could use this. You can now use the exact same argument. You can now use the exact same argument to show that anyone, anyone who claims to be a prophet, as long as they survive 23 years, is a true prophet. Or anyone who claims to be the Messiah and lives 23 years is a true Messiah. This is in Ahmadis. How? What has happened to your minds that you can look at this and say, okay, guys, anyone who actually reads these passages would not interpret them the way you're interpreting them. So you're just being told how to interpret them and your interpretations are ridiculous and they completely contradict the actual meaning which you can find by the context. That's one thing you do. You, re you have to reject all, the his all, the, all of history because you can't read these passages and then find out that Muhammad died while saying his aorta is being severed or that Muhammad delivered the satanic verses. So you have to reject all, all the history behind this in order to get your passages to work. And then you have to come up with an insane, absurd rule that would make thousands and thousands of false prophets and false messiahs, true prophets and true messiahs because of the argument you just, you just used. And we can lay all of this out to you and you will not see the problem. You just won't see the problem. Why? Because to see the problem, you would have to say, hmm. The, my leaders are wrong. And you can't do that because you're no longer an Ahmadi. You could watch this guy and think, uh, think this Ahmadi is nuts, but uh, it's not this just This Ahmadi is nuts. I have to say, this Ahmadi is nuts. <laughs> this Ahmadi is nuts yeah. with this argument. Yeah. Absolutely. Terrible. Something AP. Terrible. And D would he agree. Is. He is nuts. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. Take a couple super chats. But is Sheikh Al Ibn Yamama a real Muslim? I wonder if there is a Sheikh with that name because uh, there is the Battle of Yamama, which I always deliberately mispronounce as Yamama because it is actually pronounced Yamama. And uh, people always giggle like little kids. Yeah. Say the Battle of Yamama. <laughs> Bro, I beg at your feet, please avoid cold things for a while. Don't tell at your feet what to do. Joseph Smith lived long enough to finish the Book of Mormon. Therefore, he has to be a true prophet. Um, Joseph Smith actually died young, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, dates were that he started. So he may have actually not survived the 23 years. But yeah, they're talking about not being successful, whereas Mormons would say he's to he was totally successful. You, you see, they have a whole state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I knew it. Uh, I'm God and that explains everything. What the heck? It's one of AP's fans. The Mahdi Has Appeared is a YouTube channel. Yeah, we've checked it out. It's powerful. Yes. Powerful. I'm dying from poetic justice. Muhammad's last words. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, oh, here we have uh, Cameron from Capturing Christianity. David, I'm surprised you're still a Christian after hearing AP's powerful argument for atheism on his channel powerful stuff he, it's because uh david is denying the truth like and an thereby, yeah yeah he, he 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 didn't accept the irrefutable proof uh and this is just a consequence we're dealing with yeah it yeah. is surprising though but to be fair i only watched half the video so maybe yeah, maybe half isn't enough and once i see the full video in all its atheistic glory Maybe I'll be like, oh, mind blown. AP is right. I can just go back and, to prison. And if I don't die before being 23 years old, then whew, wow. This will be the proof. And yeah. you've actually declared your pro yourself a prophet for several years. Um, yeah, quite a while now. The only reason I asked if Jews can convert is because Muhammad seems to have the proclivity to hate Jews. Thank you, D. Wood and AP. Yeah, uh, but we've talked about this. Maybe you missed it. I can give you the basic rundown. Muhammad at first, when Muhammad first starts receiving revelations, the message he was giving to people around him was, hey, it's going to be Muslims, Jews, and Christians all united against the polytheists. We're all on the same side. We've all got true revelations. Uh, we all serve the one God and so on. And then... But for that first uh, for that first 10 to 12 years that he's preaching in Mecca, he's going around telling people, hey, you guys are pagans, so you don't know. You don't know the Torah. But if I'm ever around some Jews, if I'm ever around Jews, you're going to see those Jews because they know the Torah and they, they'll recognize me. And they'll say, yeah, that guy's our prophet. That guy's our prophet. <laughs> so the entire time he's in Mecca, he's building up the Jews as these religious authorities. Just ask the Jews. They'll, they'll notice me. They'll spot me. They'll look, at me. they'll look at me and go, wow, this guy's a prophet. 
So he builds them up for the first decade of his preaching. Then the Muslim community moves to Medina, where there were three Jewish tribes, and they laughed him out of the city. They just cracking up, laughing, pranking him, messing with him, taunting him. Dude, you are such a false prophet. This is so ridiculous and so on. And this crushed Muhammad. It's, it was humiliating to him. It's a, it was massive humiliation. That's when he really started hating the Jews. They, they, were, a mass, they were a massive embarrassment to him. They, he, had, he, had, he had propped them up. Me. He had propped them up as the authorities, and they rejected him. And so, nobody accepted me. Even the Jews rejected me. I will kill them all. Yeah. So to saying. have a Jew who says no, Muhammad is a true prophet. No, they would. He'd love him. He would love. He would love someone like that. And there was Abdullah. There was a guy named Abdullah. According to the Muslim sources, you don't know how much of that stuff you can trust, but uh, according to the Muslim sources, there was a Jewish guy who converted. Let's see. Probably made up. Uh, God planted a garden and I planted a garden. You see, it's the proof. I'm the Mahdi. So bow to me. Yep. God made a garden and, yep. uh, we make gardens. You see, you see, this is the proof. Uh, Bahuala lived 74 years, died of a fever. Ellen G. White died of pneumonia, age 87. Mirza Ghulam Ahmed died age 73 of, yep, diarrhea. So... You're dealing with lots of lots of people are actually prophets, according to this argument. And again, again, this is the this is the amazing part. You can say, here is your argument. I can use that exact same argument to show you that all kinds of people, some of whom are alive today, are true prophets. Do you acknowledge these guys as true prophets? No. OK, show us what in your argument does not apply to them. Show us. They're going to have to come up with something, but it's going to be stupid. It's going to be stupid. Uh, I can't believe the two Ahmadis threw Jesus under the bus as a false prophet at your debate. They'll throw Allah under the bus uh, next to defend Muhammad. Actually, they'll throw everyone under the bus to, def to defend Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. And that's a problem. But it's the same thing with Islam, right? Y if you look, they'll throw everyone under the bus. You, you could take a Dawah guy and you could start saying, hey, what's up with Muhammad having sex with a nine-year-old girl? Oh, but, but Joseph was a pedophile and Isaac was... And they'll just come up with all these lies. And they don't care. And it becomes very clear that even though they claim to respect all these prophets, they have zero respect for anyone other than Muhammad. Wow, this is serious competition. Wait a minute. I didn't notice that. I just what? checked uh, the number of uh, Baha'is in the world. Um, well, okay. By their stats and not sure how accurate uh there there are around five to no this is actually universal statistics five to eight million uh baha'i followers are in the world uh ahmadiyya there are uh, according to their own statistics there are 10 to 20 million but um it's probably more like 10 10 15 something like that but baha'i are significantly are are a, are a serious competition in numbers to them that's interesting yeah, I, I actually remembered uh, when Nabil would go to uh, an Ahmadi event and he would say, hey, and there, there was our annual conference, man, and it was announced that seven more million people have converted to Ahmadiyya <laughs> Islam. And I was like, dude, you're not getting millions of converts every year. Are you, you guys, <laughs> if you guys had as many converts as you talk about, you would be like, you would have, you would have hundreds of millions of people. You don't. So how are you, how are you not seeing this, uh, this little issue right here? Uh, but anyway, while you're talking about that, I looked up Mormons. There are 17 million Mormons. So that's on the higher end of the estimate of how many Ahmadis in the world. I expected them to be Mormon than, than Ahmadis. So we have uh, to say, uh, Joseph Smith was about as successful as Mirza Ghulam Ahmed in uh, winning converts. Based. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Ahmed is a Muslim. Well, do they submit to all that Islam teaches using religious lingo? They are heterodox and some say they are heretics. So, yeah, I mean, my criterion is not what people say. So I'm not looking at this saying, hey, here's what a bunch of Muslims say about you or something like that. My criteria, what, when I talk about what Islam teaches, OK, what does the Quran and Muhammad say? And when I do that, when I do that, you can find things, you can find things like Surah 33, verse 40 and so on which says that Muhammad's the seal of the prophets. The ordinary Orthodox Muslim interpretation of that is that Muhammad's the final prophet. And you definitely have hadiths along those lines. As far as the, as far as the Quran, the as far as the Quran, it's not entirely strong and it's not entirely strong or clear what seal of the prophets means. But uh, the point is, 
If you're going to say, no, it doesn't mean that Muhammad is the final prophet, I'm interpreting that some other way. Okay, you can, if you say, if you as a Muslim say that means you're, you're not a real Muslim, guess what? Pick any Muslim on the planet. Let me sit down with him. I will go to 20 different Quran verses that are completely clear as to the meaning and watch him reinterpret them and say, no, that's not what it really means. Well, okay, if you get to do that with the Quran, and if you get to do that with the Hadith, and if you get to say, oh, here's what Allah says, but he means something completely different from what he says, how do you say, no, the Ahmadi, they've gone against Surah 33, verse 40, and that's it. They're, they're just not Muslims. I don't. I, that's what I mean. I don't know. It's a serious question. Yeah, there should be a parody song of uh, the final countdown, but uh, the final prophet. The final prophet. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by ah? What do you mean by mad? What do you mean by is? Depends if it's like the story of Cain and Abel of envy and self-loathing. Eh? Oh, where's my maple syrup? Eh? I'm a deer, I'm a deer, diarrhea, I'm a deer, I'm a deer. Hey, here we go. Remake of the king's speech, but it's Muhammad, and he's just saying stupid hadiths while stuttering. <laughs> <laughs> I've never yeah. seen that, so I'll have to watch it. Are you talking about, so I know there's the movie, The King's Speech, and it's like that Colin, one of those Colin guys, one of those Colin actors. I've never seen it, but I'm assuming he actually gives a speech at some point in the movie. Are you talking about the actual speech? You're not talking about remaking the movie, right? You're talking about just, there's a part, I'm assuming there's a part where he actually gives a speech and that that's why the movie is titled that. And you're saying we have, we call it the prophet's speech and it's just a bunch of rambling, stupid nonsense. If so. The, the eyes are the, the leather strap of... Yalla, brothers and sisters, yalla, brothers and sisters, the eyes, the eyes are the leather strap of the anus, yes, and this is the proof, this is irrefutable proof, how could anyone know this? Did not the King Ape Mojab and King Grape Ali Dawa already answer this? Just lose faith, it's better for you, and there's a reason for this, yeah, we'll be watching. Yes, indeed. And here we have Ahmadiyya Ahmadiyya died from diarrhea, diarrhea, diarrhea. <laughs> you guys are messed up, man. Talk about how some poor fake Messiah died. This is um, so Ahmadiyya phobic. A prophet of Allah, but lust is my guide. I claim to be holy, but my actions just hide. My child bride screams, but I don't hear her cries. I just take what I want and make up my own lies. Who am I? That's pretty good. You didn't answer the question. Who is it? Uh, 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 Muhammad. Uh, hang on. We got another song here. Oh, 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 mama mia. I'm a dear diarrhea. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the song well <laughs> enough to. I've heard the song. I know what it's about. But uh, all right. All right. Let's go ahead and continue here with some uh, with some powerful, powerful. His next. His next point. So we've seen one powerful argument. Let's go ahead and check his next argument. Number two, rejection by the Ummah and ongoing success. So the Ummah, if, if you're rejected by the Ummah. <laughs> rejection by the Ummah and his ongoing success. Despite some of the scholars of the Muslim world rejecting and mocking Ahmad peace be upon him while doing everything in their power to destroy his community, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community continues to grow far beyond what they could have imagined. This is also another powerful sign of his truth. While many may think the opposite, that the Messiah Mahdi would naturally be accepted when he comes, this is not the established pattern with respect to messengers from God. What are you giggling at, AP? He's saying he was rejected by lots of people, and therefore, he's right. This is the proof. This is the proof. Right. He's about to go into the. He's about to yeah. go into a powerful prophecy of Muhammad. Allah the Exalted says, "Alas for my servants! There comes not a messenger to them, but they mock at him." Moreover, the specific rejection of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community by the rest of the Muslim world's leaders was prophesied by the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He said, My people will be divided into 73 sections, 
all of them will be in the fire except one. The companions asked, Who are they, O Messenger of Allah? The Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, They are those who will be like me and my companions. So he said, this is a prophecy of the Ahmadiyya community. That Muhammad said that his people will be divided up, divided up into 73 different sects. And that only one of them, let's go back to see which this, there's a, there's a bunch of versions of this hadith and we'll go ahead and take a look at a problem with it. My people will be divided into 73 sections. All of them will be in the fire except one. Messenger of Allah, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, They are those who will be like me and my companions. Thus, the Muslim world, according to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him himself, would be 72 sects on the one side, all in wrongful beliefs, described by him as the fire, while there would be one isolated community on the other side, who would be distinct, on the right path, and with whom the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, identified himself. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community is that one isolated community, since it was 72 sects of Islam that declared the Ahmadiyya Muslim community outside the fold of Islam. Um, I'd like them to name the 72 sects of oh, yeah. Can you do that? Islam. What are the 72 sects that have all rejected the 73rd sect? I want to see them because he keeps saying it. Keep saying 72 sex ever, like what? So in other words, the reason you'd want this is give us the names of the 72 sects of Islam. Guess what? There are only two next, mo next if, if you were to name them, if you were to name them, you can't because just try to prove me wrong. Try to, try to name 73 sects. That is a complete list of all the different sects of Islam. Then what happens when three months later, another sect of Islam arises? This is woke garbage. There are only two sexes. There are not 73 yeah. or 72. 73. Yeah. According to, according to Muhammad, there are 73 sects. In the history of Islam, no community except the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has been unanimously labeled by 72 sects of Islam as heretical and thus made distinct from all others. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Gosh. It's another example of giving an insane interpretation to a text. Muhammad says that 73, his, his community is going to divide up into 73 sects. Uh, only one of them is going to be the truth and the others are going to be. And he interprets this as the one that the other 72 re, all unanimously reject. That has to be the true one. But we're the only one that is unanimously rejected by all the others. That's not what he said. That was, he didn't say the one that is rejected by 72 unanimously is going to be the true sect. Not what he said. In fact, in fact, let me go ahead and pull this up. Let me go ahead and pull up a passage. You see, this is the proof. Look at here. Look at, look at a, look at a different version. I told you there are a bunch of these. I told you there are a bunch of these. Get rid of this. Sunan Ibn Majah 39, 92. It was narrated from Alf bin Malik that the Messenger of Allah said, The Jews split into 71 sects, one of which will be in paradise and 70 in hell. The Christians split into 72 sects, 71 of which will be in hell and one in paradise. That's interesting. So there's going to be one sect of Jews, one sect of Jews in paradise, one sect of Christians in paradise. So Jews and Christians are going to be in paradise, and then just one sect of Islam, just one sect of Islam. Which one's that? The Ahmadis. Now watch what he says here, though. I swear by the one whose hand is the soul, by one whose hand is the soul of Muhammad, my nation will split into 73 sects, one of which will be in paradise and 72 in hell. It was said, O messenger of Allah, who are they? He said, the main body. <laughs> Who's the one true sect? The main one. The main body. Oh, okay. The main body oh. is the sect. It's very enlightening. Yeah. So the Ahmadis are the main body? Yes, we are the main body. Of course we are, because we say so. Oh. 
So here's an example, ladies and gentlemen. If you were to just read this, if you were to just read this and say, hey, uh, who, who are the people of the one sect? Muhammad says, it's the main body. Would you say, oh, the main body is this uh, tiny sect that makes up between one half and one percent of Muslims globally and who j were just invented in the 1900s. They're, they're the main sect. They're the main body. Yep. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. But notice they don't put these things in their arguments. They don't act, they don't, they don't actually show this stuff because why? Because it would instantly, if you actually read some of these passages and showed them on the screen, what these passages actually say, the argument wouldn't work anymore. No, that's not why they're not putting it on the screen because if we saw it right in front of our eyes, we would, we would be too overwhelmed yes. by the proof. We'd be blinded. That it would be, that we would be, that it would be a, a danger to our health. Yeah. The, po so the power would, the power would like be, it would be blinding. Yeah, the power would go out, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Power would go out. Thus, the 72 sects which are not on the right path themselves identified for mankind, the one community which is distinct and is on the right path. Of note, it is only this community, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, that had at its head an individual who claimed to be the representative of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Yo, that honey. is, the Imam Mahdi and promised Messiah, peace be upon him, as the words, like me and my companions, require. This is a remarkable sign of the truth of Ahmad, peace be upon him, and portends that his movement will be successful in the end. You know what's that funny? We just talked about Baha'i, the Baha'i religion. Mm -hmm. The Baha'i uh, religion claims to be um, the true conclusion of uh, Islam and Christianity and Judaism and claims that God himself, I think, manifested himself on earth in different forms, in the, in the form, in forms of different prophets by different names and so on, and that they are actually the final truth of all this um and the, and the funny thing is so no, nobody in islam accepts the baha'i as, as muslims they are a different religion but ahmadis in addition to that also reject the baha'is so if we go by the logic of this guy here and of the ahmadis here then the baha'i could also be the true ones so who is the true one now? Is it the Baha'is or the Ahmadiyya? I don't understand. Uh, it's very difficult. Yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those were their two lead-off arguments. The two lead-off arguments um, for why you should believe in this guy. Um, one was, A, if he survived longer than 23 years, he has to be a true, uh, true Messiah and a true prophet. And the other was, hey, since we're the most rejected, most unanimously rejected sect of Islam, we have to be the true one. <laughs> Guys, keep in mind, if some group is the most unanimously rejected group, isn't it possible that they're the most unanimously rejected group because there's some some serious issues there? Yeah. Wouldn't that be wouldn't that be a possibility? So how do you say no? The only explanation is that we're this one sect that happens to be the main body of Islam even though we're between half half a percent and 1% of Muslims globally, and we were just invented in the 1800s. Weird stuff. The fact that you're talking about this topic right now proves that, that, that Ahmadiyya is the true sect. Yeah, and that, and that an, an agnostic and a Christian are united in criticizing this. This is the proof. They took that, they took that as proof, remember? Yeah, they that actually... No joke for those who missed it, but they actually, so the, the, the two Ahmadis that we debated actually said, unironically, without joking, that the mere fact that David and I, um, a Christian and an atheist in their words, actually later they couldn't even decide what I am. They called us both Christians at some point. But uh, <laughs> the fact that both of us are going against them is is already proof, proof of the truth of their religion that was there they actually used this argument and they called it proof no joke powerful 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 stuff powerful dawah um take a couple super chats here and then we're gonna just look at some short 
responses from this other Muslims. Irrefutable proof, you see, David it's has nothing to say. David, yeah, you love the irrefutable part. David what do you, you think? What do you think? What do you think the apostasy rate in the West is now? I recall it was around twenty three percent years ago before Quran Gate. Thanks for your work. Yeah, I haven't seen any recent statistics, so I don't know how much that has changed. Uh, the trajectory was for this thing to keep rising. Um, I would anticipate that when we get our next uh, our next study, whatever that comes out, I suspect that the apostasy rate will be higher. You think it's going to drop, AP? I think that... Um that it won't really matter because Islam is the fastest growing religion because everyone is seeing the truth of it and also the power of it and mm -hmm. the intolerance of it and thereby converting to it, which is why um, no matter how high the apostasy rate is, it will be completely overshadowed by the uh, by the immense um, immense numbers of people who convert to Islam because they clearly see the irrefutable proof that Islam is the truth. So, yeah. Yep, it's got to be something like that. Gotta be something like that. Uh, Ahmadiyya is as slippery as the diarrhea he died of. It's pretty rude. Pretty rude. Trying to be nice. Trying to be nice to the Ahmadis because they're persecuted, even though they're, lots of them are extremely arrogant and mocking towards uh, towards us. And they hurt AP's Here's feelings. The thing. Well, you, you said you, you don't have to, you don't have a problem with them because they, because they were generally very nice and all that. But... Uh, but you have a problem with Mormons. I I understand because of theological issues. But uh, and from my experience so far, Mormons I haven't. Are extremely I haven't, nice. I have interacted with Mormons, uh, not in a debate or anything, but in you know uh, online interactions and this and that, here and there. And I mean, they see they seem. They also have a reputation for that. They seem to be significantly nicer than Ahmadi, than Ahmadis. Yeah. So. What's yes, we can agree. Mormons are significantly nicer than uh, than most people. Most people, They're, and the reason I'm the only reason I'm talking about Mormons is that's what gets brought up from Muslims when you say, "Hey, are Ahmadis Muslims?" They'll go, "Ah, oh, what about Mormons?" You see, this is the so proof. Uh, the stream yesterday with your brother in Christ and reason answers, and David ran away in humiliation. A caller who might be might have been Ahmadi or a smaller Muslim group says it's jihad of the pen. Yeah, I was in a live stream right before uh, your live stream, and I said I had to go, and then they said, "You see, you're running." <laughs> Let's see. Uh, this is the proof. Emil says, AP, if Allah does not exist, then how did the universe begin with an explosion? <laughs> if Islam, wow. That would be funny. If Islam isn't true, then why did the universe begin with an explosion? <laughs> I never thought about that before. <laughs> That's a powerful. This is, this is powerful. I don't know. I, I have to think about that. Yeah, you're in trouble, bud. Uh, 72! Sex seventy two. Uh, best jobs in the world. You get paid to laugh. Genius. Yes, we do. We, isn't it cool? I, we talked about it before. It is cool that we just get to sit here and watch video clips and check them out and crack up laughing and hang out with people from all over the planet. These are cool times. These are cool times of being. So yeah, Ahmadi. Yeah. So Ahmadi heaven will be full of pedos, according to the hadith. They have to be like Mo. <laughs> they're gonna be like Mo, yeah. and they're all gonna like little kids. Yes, little kid liking little kids is soon. soon. Well, although I'm, I, I'm, I'm guessing this is standard in Islam because the Ahmadis I've talked to tend to reject the age of Aisha. Uh, although Nabil didn't, so I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe there is no official position. But the uh, lots of Ahmadis I've talked to in recent years reject the age of Aisha, even though we got hundreds of sources on it. Uh, 73, all but one. I wonder which 72 communities will be slated to be the promised virgins to the one sect of true Islam. As far as all the virgins, Allah is making specially designed sex servants for Muslims. So some of them are from earthly, uh, earthly women, but uh, most of them are specially designed sex machines that your earthly wives will have to compete with in paradise.
Yeah, the general understanding is, is not that they, that these virgins are uh, people who existed on 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 in this life, but that they are uh, specially designed, wonderful virgins that are unlike anything that we have seen in this world. They, um, so it, it's Allah. Allah has Allah, of course, creates Allah has a, has a factory where He creates these these virgins with a skin that is so fair that is almost that it is almost transparent. And you can see the you can see the bone marrows and all that uh, through their skin, and they are so desirable and and all that. And there is no competition as well because um, Allah owns the means of production when it comes to to them. So it mm -hmm. says he he has the only brand that uh, actually produces the virgins, and apparently he's going he's going he's going to do a great job. So don't mm -hmm. worry. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it's going to be an awesome job. Uh, Rouge Provisionist says, what happened to being like Socrates? I know that I know nothing. Well, keep in mind, I'm not saying I actually know nothing. I'm saying it's a, that's kind of the feeling I have uh, is that given everything that can be known, I know a very, very, very tiny fraction of it. And so uh, if, if someone else is talking and they know even less, it's just not clear to me why, uh, why they should be taking all their thoughts as, uh, as something that I should be adopting too. Uh, but as far as me, it's 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 if I haven't studied something, I don't like to talk about it very much. And I say, hey, go talk to this other person. But you're objecting to what I'm saying about Mormonism. This tritheism objection is true for LDS, but no faith is monolith is monolithic except AP's cult. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, but the only point there is uh, there are foundational doctrines in Christianity that are different in Mormonism. And therefore, therefore, they would meet the definition of a cult, whereas as weird as the Ahmadi arguments are, I'm just inclined to say, all right, if you believe in the six articles of faith and you practice the five pillars and you do these things that Muhammad said make you a true Muslim, then even if you have a really dumb view of the end times, it seems to conflict with the orthodox understanding. And even if you're appealing to this, uh, this guy who has really, really terrible arguments, I don't see how that would make you something outside of the fold of Islam. Because if terrible arguments mean you're not a Muslim, no one's a Muslim because you guys all have terrible arguments. Yeah. Uh, I'm a shake these nut. What the heck is wrong with your followers? <laughs> <laughs> Has uh, anyone else gone by shake these nuts? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you need a, you need a, <laughs> you need, you need to come up with the Arabic sort of, uh, version of it. <laughs> shake all, <laughs> shake all these nuts. <laughs> Shake all these Shake nuts. Shake these nuts. Oh, Shake all on, these nuts. Uh, Muhammad, Muslims committed shirk making Zoroastrians dimmy. Uh, yeah, um, th there has been uh, in history, there has been, there have been, um, Muslims were confused as to whether they are supposed to treat the Zoroastrians as dimmies or not, because the dimmies were only restricted to being uh, people of the book meaning people who actually have a book that was revealed by Allah. So they, they would only accept the Christians and Jews initially as as the Mies and reject the Zoroastrians as, um, as, as disbelievers that have no chance of becoming even the Mies, but they, they'd have to convert or die. But then, uh, it, but then it was adopted at some point by um accepting the idea that they do have a book although it is not a book recognized to be a revelation by Allah they also did the same thing with different uh different groups in the Middle East smaller religions I mean they even eventually had to accept the Hindus as the Mies because it just proved to be very mm -hmm. difficult to just go in there and and, and slaughter everyone. Yeah, there was too many of them. Yeah. Okay. Well, just uh, so hey, the we're making a decision. We're making a. Uh, we're calling those. We can, we're saying they can be dimmies too. Yeah. Yeah. You see, this is why we lost. We compromised. Yeah. This is the proof. 
Anyone looking at a figure as a prophet after 33 to 90 AD is a cult. Jesus is the seal, final prophet and Messiah. John the Revelator got a prophetic vision. Yeah, I mean, I mean, according to the New Testament, people can have the gift of prophecy, uh, but it's not the same thing as like a prophet in like the Old Testament sense or the uh, or the Islamic sense. Um, stop I intellectually. Oh, Ahmadiyya, while watching this stream, says, stop intellectually graping me. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when people change the name of their channel or something. Uh, Rouge uh -huh. Provisionist says, I dream of a new Islamic rap, Jinn and Jews. Someone had to have done that. I've seen that. I've seen that before, Jinn and Jews. I've seen that before. I mean, I haven't seen the video, but I've seen the phrase Jinn and Jews before as a, as a parallel to the song Jinn and Jews. That sounds I'm assuming has, someone must have made that, right? If yeah. only Ahmadiyya and Muhammad had taken black seed oil and camel urine. Yeah, uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed and Muhammad would both be alive even today. Yeah. Why was Muhammad obsessed with pale skin? It's very weird. It is indeed weird. I do not know why unless he just believed that it's something great about having super pale skin. And if so, why? Why this? Why constantly be describing how white Muhammad was. Weird, weird stuff. All right, AP, here's a short clip from your hero and everyone else's, Sheikh Asim Al-Hakim. Remember this guy? He's the Ahmadiyya and the Qadiyaniyya. The That's interesting here. He says, are Ahmadis and Qadiyanis classified as Muslims? I don't know if some people have draw a distinction there. I've always heard those used interchangeably. Uh, so Ahmadis, yeah. there you're named after Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, and Qadiani, there you're named after the the place where he was born. So I don't know if there, I don't know if there's people who actually draw a distinction between these, but here he's describing them like there's two different groups. So not sure. And the Qadiania, the consensus, not my opinion, the consensus of all schools of thought and all uh, forums of Muslim scholars worldwide. Take them out of the fold of Islam. You see, this is the proof. <laughs> That's what this literally, they're literally saying the same thing. He's saying everyone acknowledges. Now, to be fair, it's not, it's not true. Well, well, he's saying the four schools and so on. He's saying the various schools and so on would all reject these guys and so on. So there are, there are Muslims who acknowledge Ahmadis as true Muslims. Uh, he's pointing out that the schools of thought would rule these guys out as Muslims. But that's what, the Ahmadis brag about, ah, you see, we're, we're rejected by all these other guys, and therefore it's true. So he's saying they're obviously false because they're unanimously rejected. And they say, we're unanimously rejected, therefore we're the truth. So, well, they can look yep. at exactly the same thing. Hey, everyone's rejecting you. This shows that you can't be, you can't be a, a Muslim group. And they look at the exact same thing. We're all being rejected. This proves that we're the one true Muslim group and everyone else is false. The schools of no thought. Because they do not relate to Islam. Though they want to be relating to Islam, because they have a different religion, they even have a different messenger religion. after the Prophet Islam. And this by itself is an act of apostasy. When you claim that there is a prophet after our prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and in mess And I actually, no, I mean, this is, some, yeah, this, some, this is something that resonates with most. What? And, and that's the main objection to them. What? You believe in a guy after Muhammad? I have to side with the Ahmadis on this issue. Sheikh Asim, do you believe that Jesus is going to return? If so, you believe in a prophet who's coming after Muhammad. They just believe it happened in a different way from the one you're talking about. So what you would be saying, if this is your own, now you may have all sorts of other objections. The only objections you've given is that, well, all the four schools reject these guys. But as far as why they would be rejected, the only thing you've given is they believe in someone after Muhammad. Well, that's what you believe in someone after Muhammad. You, you also believe in someone after Muhammad. They just believe that it happened in a way different from what you believe. So if you, if you believe that's enough to rule you out of the Islamic camp and make you a different religion. You're saying that having an incorrect view of the end times is enough to make you a non-Muslim. Even if you believe in, uh, even if you believe in all six articles of faith, even if you practice all five pillars, if you have an incorrect view of the end times, you're a non-Muslim. 
You're from a different religion. And again, if that's how high you want to set the bar, then I, I don't know. I, I've never met a Muslim because I've never met a Muslim where I cannot show him something from the Quran or the Hadith and he would not reinterpret it or interpret it wrongly. That's the truth. Yep. When you when you ask when you ask Muslims um, uh, th this very question, and th th this is this is a question that is not very uncommon. Um, how, if Muhammad is, is the final prophet, um, it will Jesus come back? Wouldn't he be technically the the final prophet then? Uh, they say no, because it's because he already came. He already was a prophet. He's not new. He's just coming back and all that. And he didn't he didn't, he didn't die. Well, okay. If you can do that, then Ahmad is can, can do the very same thing. Mm -hmm. That Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is not a new prophet. He's just the second coming of Jesus. So mm -hmm. no problem. Yeah. And they distort the whole religion. So this is... Now, there you go. He says they distort the whole religion. If you showed how they distort the entire religion, that would be something. And I... I <laughs> look at this. Look at his, look at him right there. I don't know. It looks funny to me. Right <laughs> <laughs> I want to, hang on. I'm screenshotting this. If I ever need him for a thumbnail, it's a good picture right there. There we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he just said they distort the entire religion. If you wanted to say they distort the entire religion, therefore uh, they're not Islamic, I would have to see how they do that. Because again, they believe in the articles of faith. They believe in the five pillars and so on. So how do they distort the entire religion? Religion, not sure, but a couple more seconds. Senses of all Muslims. No Muslim had ever said that they are Muslims as well. The Ahmadiyya and the Qadiyaniyya are all uh, disbelievers. They are disbelievers. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here, folks. All right, we have one more video. One more video, and then we're going to do a poll. Then we'll do a poll on whether Ahmadis are Muslims or not. And that poll will be final, ladies and gentlemen. That poll will be final. That is the final deciding factor in whether Ahmadis are Muslims or non-Muslims. So we're going to watch a video by uh, Shabir Ali here in a second. We're going to watch Shabir Ali's uh, assessment on Ahmadis. And uh, we'll have sort of our, uh, our final thoughts on this. Uh, I'll give my sort of final thoughts, but I already shared mine early, but I'll, I'll say the same thing. Then AP can share his thoughts on why he always goes with the consensus of Muslims, no matter what it is. And that we'll do, and then we'll put it to the test. And again, this is final, ladies and gentlemen. For all future generations, this will decide whether Ahmadis are Muslims or non-Muslims. There is, there will be no follow-up, no follow-up vote. And uh, and I assume that uh, Ahmadis have to then accept these results as true, right? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, urinating broom says, since no one did it yet, I'll be the one to say it. Ahmadiyya looks sus in that picture. It is what it is. What does sus mean? I know it. Suspicious. What's that mean? Yeah. Suspect. Suspicious. Yes. What's that mean? Like in what sense? Just that somebody looks kind of weird and sus. Oh, okay. Sus. All right. Suspicious. Sus. It comes from a game called Among Us. That's where it became the a The zombie game? game? Wait, no. No, 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 no. That's different. That's called The Last of Us. Okay. Among Us is this little stupid us game it. that was popular. Uh, that was, yeah. Among Us? That's a stupid name for a game. It is. Uh, Sheikh Manut says, I'm the true prophet. Well, you got less than 23 years left after you've announced it. You're in trouble. Alhamdulillah. David, will you do live call-in debates someday? Yeah, yeah. I actually need a, if I'm going to do more than we're doing now, uh, I need better uh, i need to i have all sorts of technical problems with what i have now so i'll have to upgrade and also figure out how to do that because uh the way the way it is now if i just send out the link if i were to send out the link to join i'm wondering if people are just going to keep like i don't know pass the link around then like millions of people are going to be calling in anyway i'd have to find i'd have to find out from someone who does it regularly like actually sit down with them and show me how to do it and i am going to have to upgrade this system because it's kind of a overloaded at the moment but uh um, yes because i'm assuming i will need to be running multiple programs if i just don't want to give out this link i'd have to like have them calling in by skype or some other program or something like that i don't know i don't know i'll figure out yes i would be happy to do uh live call-in shows at some point but i'm just terrible i'm terrible at all technology i'm really bad i'm really really bad i know how to use like three or four pro i know how to use microsoft word uh powerpoint uh 
iMovie, and a little bit of Final Cut. Those are the programs I know how to use. And this proves, this is irrefutable proof that David is the Mahdi because it was said uh, it was said that the Mahdi would be terrible with technology. This is the proof. Would... This is the proof. And right now I'm using Ecamm. I've been using Ecamm like six or seven years. I barely know how to use this. Um, I know just the basic. There's all these extra things, cool things that I could do, and I just do not know how to use it. If I ever figure out how to use them, I in instantly forget it as soon as I'm not doing it. So yeah, terrible with technology. I need, I basically need another person in the room who's running all the technology for me at some point. Yes, and then that'll too. be good. No. Is that Jackie Chan? You see Islam is so powerful. Even the great and powerful Jackie Chan comes to Islam. Yeah. Who's Jackie Chan? What's that talking about? I don't know who Jackie Chan is. I know who Jackie Chan is. Who are they talking about Jackie Chan? Was that Sheikh Awesome? This is embarrassing. Sheikh Awesome Al Hakim doesn't look like Jackie Chan. Oh, Black Angel said Candace thinks Candace thinks the Earth might be flat. Well, it wouldn't surprise me about Candace. I think Candace is going to be coming up with all kinds of uh, views here in the near future. Based, on I heard that her brain is flat. Uh, I'm not sure if this is, if it's true though. But that's what no, I it's super convoluted, which means you're super smart. All right, guys, one last video clip here from Shabir being asked about Ahmadis. So this is Shabir Ali, a guy I've debated eight or nine times. Um, much nicer than someone like Sheikh. Awesome. I'll, I'll okay, Dr. Shabir Ali, here's a question. Do you feel Ahmadi Muslims hold heretical beliefs? What do they get right or wrong about the Quran? Well, uh, to begin with, uh, Ahmadis read the same Quran as uh, Sunnis do, um, uh, so far as the Arabic is concerned. When it comes to the translation, uh, usually Ahmadis uh, read translations that are prepared by some of their leaders. And uh, in the translations of uh, a few verses, uh, one can see a leaning towards uh, some particular Ahmadi uh, beliefs. Now, so Shabir points out that they believe in the same Quran, but that Ahmadis typically rely on Ahmadi translations and that these Ahmadi translations will favor Ahmadi interpretations of verses. And so you could actually look at passages about Jesus in an Ahmadi translation and so on, and you'll see some differences. You'll see some differences. So if you go to... Uh, if you go to Surah 3, verse 55, for instance, in an Ahmadi translation, um, it'll talk about Jesus dying because they believe that he survived the crucifixion, but that he died later, which your average Muslim does not believe Jesus ever died. I, I believe he's just still alive. The good thing is about is, is that at least they read the same Quran and just reinterpret it and, and, uh, and translate it or interpret it differently. Can you, uh, can you imagine... If they didn't read the actual Quran, but came with a new book, and then said that the uh, that the Quran, the original Quran, has been corrupted uh, by people, and then started reinterpreting that Quran with a new book, that would be terrible. That would, that be, would be really, really weird. That would yeah, be so yeah. ridiculously insane. Yeah. Uh, but on that issue, let, let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and give <laughs> an example. That is funny. You, make sure you come back to that point towards the end, AP. <laughs> Okay. Because that's a good one. Surah 3, verse 55. So, Pickthal. And remember when Allah said, O Jesus, lo, I am gathering thee and causing thee to ascend unto me. What? How do they translate this? Gathering thee and causing thee to ascend unto me. I'm pointing this out because this is actually a defense of Ahmadis. And watch, watch, watch. We'll see what we do. Yusuf Ali. Behold, God said, O Jesus, I will take thee and raise thee to myself. I will take thee and raise thee to myself. Hillel Khan. And remember when Allah said, O Isa, I will take you and raise you to myself. So they keep translating this as take you and raise you. M.H. Shakir. And when Allah said, O Isa, I'm going to terminate the period of your stay on earth. Now that's different, right? That's Shakir. Uh, so most of the other translations are saying, I will take you. Here, Shakir translated, O Isa, I'm going to terminate the period of your stay on earth and cause you to ascend unto me. Now, Sher Ali, that's an Ampity translation. Remember the time when Allah said, O oh, Jesus, I will cause thee to die a natural death and will raise thee to myself. 
cause you to die a natural death and raise thee to myself. So they believe, they believe that Jesus died a natural death. And so they translate it that way. Here's the thing. So you look at that and say, ah, they're translating it differently. Here's the thing. Translating that as die is actually much closer to what it means. Uh, because uh, mutawafika, mutawafika there, that means, uh, uh, it means taking away the soul. It means taking away the soul. And it can be used in the sense of sleep because in a, in, according to the Quran, when you sleep, Allah removes your soul. And then when you wake up, he puts your soul back in you. So you can, so it can refer to sleep, but if it's not talking about sleep, it's talking about Allah taking away your soul, not returning it, and you're dead. But that's what it uses about Jesus. So all this, I will take you, that's, that's misleading. That's misleading. Take you means just like, oh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just take you. It means take your soul away. Oh, and so that's, that's so normally, you, that's normally, you, that's normally used of death. And that's why you'll find even in the comment, if you go in the commentaries, it will say, oh yeah, so Allah put Jesus to sleep right before he took him. Why would, why would Allah put him to sleep? Bring him to bed. What, the soldiers are coming to get him? Allah rescues him and they, Jesus takes a nap? But they're doing that because they know what the word means. It means to take away the soul. And the only way to avoid the interpretation that this refers to death is to say it refers to sleep. And so they say, oh, sleep. So anyway, the point is, we, Muslims will talk about, and Shabir's about to talk about it, uh, the problem with Ahmadis and Surah 33, verse 40, which says that... that uh, that Muhammad is the seal of the prophets, which is interpreted as Allah is the last of the prophets. They'll say, ah, you're not going with our standard interpretation of this. Well, guys, you're you're twisting, you're twisting the the words of Surah 3, verse 55, and Ahmadis are actually more, more correct. They have a better translation than you guys do. So anyway, point is, that's why I said, if you're going to say they're wrong about this or they're wrong about this verse, and that means they're not Muslims, even though they believe in the six articles of faith and they practice the five pillars and they have they meet all the basic requirements of things Muhammad said make you a true Muslim. If you're saying they're, they're, still, not, uh, they're still not Muslims because they get this thing wrong over here, well, guess what? Every single Muslim I've ever met in my life gets things wrong about the Quran. Why? Because the, the Quran, the Muslim sources are incoherent. You cannot have you cannot have a coherent position on these things. And therefore, you have to reinterpret this or that or this or that or this or that. Or this or that. Okay. Or this or that. That's true. What, what, what is the main thing that separates uh, the Ahmadiyya community from, from the Sunnis? Uh, in, in India, uh, within the last uh, couple of hundred years, there arose uh, a leader who was a Sunni and who was a defender of Islam um, among, uh, against many critics. And, and, and he debated with people of other faiths. Uh, and eventually, he um, uh, began to claim that he is uh, the uh, second coming of Jesus, uh, that the Jesus wouldn't actually come down from the sky as Sunnis uh, generally believe, uh, but uh, some c a person would represent Jesus I in a way in which John the Baptist was said to be Elijah now in a way kind of like in a new person, uh, not the same flesh and blood Elijah come down from the sky as some people would have expected at the time, but a new person somehow living in the spirit of Elijah. Mm. So in a similar way, he said that I am this new, I, I am the Messiah, the expected one. He's not coming from the sky, he's born of a woman as I am, uh, and I'm in the spirit of that Messiah. Uh, that's actually important that Shabir uh, clarifies that. And to, to his credit, Shabir's uh, doing his best to accurately represent uh, Ahmadiyya Islam. But so, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed claims to be the second coming of Jesus. The obvious objection would be, wait a minute, Jesus talked about his second coming, and it, you're, obvi you're obviously not Jesus. You're not actually Jesus. The Ahmadi response is, well, when John the Baptist came, people are saying, hey, this is Elijah. Right? And they asked John the Baptist, I'm not Elijah. What are you talking about? So John the Baptist is not Elijah, but Jesus says, this is Elijah. So wh what's going on here? Well, John the Baptist is saying he's not actually Elijah. Because when people said that Elijah's going to come back, they're actually thinking Elijah's going to, the actual Elijah's going to return. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. It's, it's someone who's coming in the spirit and power of Elijah, but it's not actually Elijah. So John the Baptist is the fulfillment of the prophecy, but he's not actually, he's not actually Elijah. So in a similar way, in a similar way, Ahmadis claim 
that the second coming of Jesus is not actually Jesus coming down out of the clouds. It's actually someone coming in like the spirit and power of Jesus. And it's completely ridiculous if you read what Jesus said about his second coming, but that is the Ahmadi position, and that is the way they defend against the claim uh, that, you, dude, you're obviously not Jesus. You, you didn't come out of the clouds. You didn't come down in the way Jesus said he would. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, yeah we're, we're reinterpreting those passages, all, but we have, we have a basis for reinterpreting those passages because of what happened with Elijah and John the Baptist, so... Shabir uh, actually gives a good, good summary of what Ahmadis believe there. Uh, it, it is also noted that he claimed to be a prophet. Uh, God gave him revelation and he now has a, a message for people in the modern world. Now, Sunnis did not accept his uh, claims, uh, apart from the idea that Jesus, uh, uh, that he is the second coming of Jesus. Uh, Sunnis uh, generally believe that, uh, and, and not only generally, but it seems to be essential to the Sunni belief, that there is no prophet after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is based on a reading of a verse of the Quran and uh, Surah 33, verse number 40, which uh, describes the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Prophet Muhammad as the Khatam and Nabi and the seal of the Prophets, and many hadiths which plainly say that he is the last of all of the Prophets. So, Dr. Spirelli, does that justify the violence against them? No, Muslims should not be violent to other people, um, regardless of their ideas. So, um, if people have different ideas, th this calls for dialogue and debate, but uh, not, not for violence at all. It's right, ridiculous. Uh, actually, perfect example of what I was just talking about, right? So the, the criticism would be, look, matter of fact, let me go ahead and uh, I can put it up here. Uh, Surah, so Surah 33, verse 40, Shabir just mentioned it. I've mentioned it multiple times. This would be the main objection. So look at the different translations here. Pickthal, Muhammad is not the father of any man among you, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. Yusuf Ali, Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he is the apostle of God and the seal of the prophets. But Hilali Khan, Muhammad is not the father of any man among you, but he is the messenger of Allah and the last of the prophets. So they're interpreting seal of the prophets. And same thing with Shakir. Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he is the apostle of Allah and the last of the prophets. So if you're interpreting seal of the prophets as last of the prophets, if you're interpreting seal of the prophets as last of the prophets, well, then how do you have a prophet after, uh, after Muhammad? And again, you'd, have to, you'd still have the issue of uh, what about the second coming of Jesus? There's a prophet who's coming after the time of Muhammad. And so the question is what you would do with that. But here's, here's my issue. Here's my issue. Look at what Shabir just did. So he's saying, ah, this, this is putting them outside the fold of Islam. Don't fight them. Don't fight them. But this is putting them outside of the fold of Islam because they believe in a prophet after Muhammad. Shabir didn't explain how you reconcile this criticism with the fact that Shabir, uh, or at least or regular Sunni Muslims, believe in the second coming of Jesus. They believe Jesus is going to return. Um, so, I mean, is that a problem for Muslims in general, that they all, that Muslims in general believe in a prophet after Muhammad? So that's one issue. But the other issue, the other issue is if you're going to say, hey, Muhammad is the seal of the prophets, and we interpret that as last of the prophets. Okay, can you interpret that differently? Can you interpret that differently? I would say so. I'd say oh, seal of the prophets can mean all kinds of things. Um, and so, and so, if you're saying, hey, seal of the prophets, and you're not interpreting it as no one can come after Muhammad, how do you rule that out? Look at what Shabir just did. Is violence against them justified? And he says, no, you should never fight over these things. You should never be fighting people. What did Muhammad say in Surah 9, verse 73? He said he's commanded to wage jihad, not only against unbelievers, but also against hypocrites. People are claiming to be Muslims, but aren't, are doing something wrong. So Muhammad saying wage jihad, he's been commanded to wage jihad against unbelievers and hypocrites. As a Muslim, if you're saying they're, 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 following Islam, but they're, they're doing it wrongly, you'd have to say they're hypocrites. So you have a command to wage jihad against people like Ahmadis. Guess what? What would, what would Shabir say if I brought this up to him? He would say, no, 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 that's not what the verse means. When it says wage jihad there, it means, uh, I don't know, dialogue or something. He's going to say it means something else. That's the point. 
any Muslim, any Muslim is going to reinterpret all kinds of verses of the Quran. It's just a fact. How do you say if you reinterpret this one verse, it puts you outside of the fold of Islam? And I look at that and I say, it would be pretty easy to reinterpret that verse. In fact, it'd be, it, it's easier to reinterpret a verse like Surah 3340, Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. It's easier to reinterpret that than it is to reinterpret all the numerous claims in the Quran that affirm the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Torah and the gospel. So if you guys get to reinterpret all of those, not to mention tons of other passages, how can you say these guys can't reinterpret that one verse or that, that puts them outside of the fold of Islam? How do you do it? That's my question. Um, all right, AP, final thoughts before we run our poll. Final thoughts, because you're the guy who says, no, they're not, they're not real Muslims and they have to be violently subjugated. I stand by that. Is that it? Yeah. So do you think, do you still maintain that Ahmadis are not Muslims? Uh, yes, because I don't like Ahmadiyya. Ahmadiyya, Ahmadiyya. All right, guys, we're going to have the poll now. So my position, just to recap, they recite the Shahada. They perform the five pillars. They believe in the six articles of faith. They have some really, really terrible arguments. They have really bad arguments for defending Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, but you have the same style, terrible arguments defending Muhammad. So you can't just say they have terrible arguments, therefore they're not Muslims. Which which Muslims don't have terrible arguments? And so Muslims don't have terrible arguments because Muslims are blessed with the uh, the one, the true religion of Allah um, revealed to Muhammad through the through Jibreel, who graped him in a cave and said, "Read now." Uh, so they don't have terrible arguments. They have necessarily good arguments if they just stick by the arguments of the Quran. Whereas uh, the Ahmadiyya, uh, ah Ahmadiyya is nuts. It's it's uh, it relies on a complete misinterpretation and reformation of uh, re re distortion, you, you could say, of the true religion of Islam. Um, and relies on some guy named uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, who is clearly, clearly false. I mean, who in the world comes, uh, you know, many centuries or a thousand years after a certain prophet, after a certain revelation, and says, hey, I have a new mess. I have the true message. That old one that is distorted and misrepresented, I have the true message. I mean, that's ridiculous, mm -hmm. isn't it? So yeah, yeah, guys, did you did you catch what AP is saying? You got you got this revelation; it's all wrapped up, and then some guy comes along centuries later and says, ah, "I'm the new guy, and I'm going to tell you how to reinterpret all these uh, earlier things." And you say, "No, you can't do that." Is that something Muslims can actually say? Keep in mind. So when you read about ah, Muhammad said the Quran says that Muhammad is the seal of the prophets. Therefore, so he's the seal of the prophets, and what that means is there can't be anyone to come after him. I mean, think about this. You could you could apply the exact same reasoning to the words of Jesus, where Jesus on the cross, he says, it is finished. Okay, it's finished. It's done. Nothing co Nothing's coming after him. What does that mean? It means Muhammad can't come along later. Well, Muslims would come along later and say, ah, you got to reinterpret that stuff. So how? That's the question. On what consistent basis can a Muslim say, this guy is ruled out? That would not also, uh, uh, this guy's ruled out, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is ruled out. On what basis could you say he's ruled out that I could not also apply to Muhammad? And on what basis can you say Ahmadis are not Muslims that I could not also point to Muslims and say, well, you're not Muslims. If they, if, well, if they don't agree with your interpretation on Surah 30, 33 verse 40, they're not Muslims. Okay, I, I could show you a ton of passages in the Quran that you're not going to agree on, on basic, like what, what, obvi what Allah obviously says and you're going to reject it. So you're not Muslims, right? So there are no Muslims. So either, I would say either Ahmadis are Muslims or there are no Muslims. Take your pick. It's one or the other. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we got the poll going now. We got the poll going. Interesting. I I did not know which the way, that, I thought it was going to be roughly even or that it would actually be most people saying no, possibly, that they're not Muslims, just because I saw, when I posted the, the topic we we're going to be discussing, a bunch of people just saying, no, they're not Muslims, they're not Muslims, they're not Muslims. But here we have 69% of people saying that Ahmadis are Muslims. Oh, 
So thereby, Ahmadis are now officially accepted as Muslims. They are. Dude, I said I said these results were final. I said this poll is final. It's always possible that it could change in uh, in the next couple of minutes before we uh, before we sign off. But based good on what we're seeing right now, Ahmadiyya. this is good very news. good news. This is very good news for Ahmadis. Uh, we can actually officially say after this poll that Sheikh Asim al Hakim, Shabir Ali, uh, all these guys, and Nan Rashid, they're all wrong about Ahmadis. The people oh, have Jesus. spoken. The people have spoken. All right, we'll wow. see if that changes at all here in the this next is, couple minutes. As guys, you only have uh, until we finish these super chats to. Uh, this is actually this is vote. proof that our media is the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're about to we're 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 about to see if that changes. But guys, ooh, seventy percent. It's my goodness. Wow. Ahmadis are going to love us. They are going to love us. We're their ultimate defenders. Ahmadiyya. Uh. <laughs> Dima says, Mike Winger is the kind of guy that says, oh, my stars, when he stubs his toe. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, again, I need to know, is there a site where you're getting these from, or is everyone just coming up with all these things? <laughs> he says, good. oh, my stars. Uh, Kate, uh, I have no dog in this fight, but it seems claiming Muslims also believe in a prophet after Muhammad because they believe Jesus will return is not a valid argument because Jesus was before Muhammad. Yeah, but he would be. Yeah. But... Hmm? Same goes for Mirza Ghulam Ahmed in the in this, in, this, in, this, in uh, according to the logic of the Ahmadis. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the point is, if he's the seal of the prophets, what's another guy coming along? Why is why is there why is there someone else? Why, why does Allah say, "Hey, here's all these people. Let me bring back Jesus for this," so that Jesus is like the final guy? So he'd be final. He'd be. He, Jesus of the Mah Jesus of the Mahdi are coming afterwards, right? Um, again, you could you mm -hmm. could try to work your way around it, but it's just an issue for instantly saying, for instantly claiming, nope, you believe in someone after Muhammad. Okay, Muslims believe in someone after Muhammad. Mahdi. Um, but you're you're right in the sense that Jesus is someone who was there before and came after, so he was technically before, but he is still coming after. So anyway, the point is, it's a it's it's. It's just not entirely convincing that you could use that to rule out Mirza Ghulam Ahmed. Uh, Lloyd says, do you think Muhammad shouted no homo after his interaction with Zahar? Uh, also, Winger liked my profile picture. Oh, uh, nice. I think that's Benny in there. Yeah, it's actually uh, in the Hadith where uh, Muhammad said no homo after that. Yeah, yeah it is. And after, after he said he's a prophet, he said, trust me, bro. Yeah. Can you imagine what a Pakistani Muslim's family tree looks like? Very narrow with small branches is my guess. Uh, no fatties come at me. Um, yeah, let's This is very incestophobic. This is, please stop. Here's what sucks. Like, I don't like, and I'm not a fan of just making fun. Yeah, hey, you're all incest. But it's, it's just true. It's like they have massive rates of first cousin marriage, which lead to all sorts of uh, medical problems and so on. It's like, are you I a medical know, maybe doctor? Maybe you do need to make fun of him. No. And that's why we're going to have uh, the Nasser brothers. Uh, if we ask them, they would show us how first cousin marriage is great. See? David, are you saying this poll is the seal of all the polls? Yes. <laughs> Anyone who that's comes cool. along with a poll after this poll is a false poller. Yeah. Uh, 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 Medea says, told you so. Not sure what that's refer. Oh, um, maybe uh, about the poll. Yeah, Goat Hub says Mike Winger is the type of guy to say, "Oh my heavens!" After he is startled, <laughs> he's also the type of guy to be startled. <laughs> that is true. Wait, we're getting more about Mike Winger. Mike Winger is that's the type great. of dude to plug in, uh, to plug in Hall and Oates on the <laughs> on the auxiliary Hall and Oates. Dude. Oh boy, Mike Winger. All right, guys. So um, that's it. I'm about to take a screenshot of this poll. 375 votes. 377 votes. AP, any final thoughts before I take a screen? Before I close this poll, I take a screenshot as proof um, that I'm the greatest defender. Here's what's crazy, guys. I'm a better defender. If I was, we were making fun of their arguments the entire time. But we right now are better defenders that Ahmadis are true Muslims than Ahmadis themselves. 
They go around their entire lives and they are unanimously rejected by Muslims, according to them. All 72 sects of Islam reject them. D. Wood and the apostate prophet do one show and 70, 67% of people say they're true Muslims. But well, I, mean, I, I still maintain that that they're not true Muslims because it's, it, it just doesn't make sense that somebody comes along so much later and claims to have the true message. That That is true. That is true. But AP, isn't it weird? This is what's weird. If they're actually using it as an argument that they're unanimously rejected by other sects of Islam, mm -hmm. if we really made powerful cases to persuade lots of Muslims that Ahmadis are inside the fold of Islam, would they have to reject themselves at that point? Would they have to say, oh, no, you know, it used to be 72 sects of Islam reject us, but now only 30 sects of Islam reject us because of the powerful work of David Wood in defending us as true Muslims. And then they'd have to say, I guess we're not the true sect of Islam because they made it that, that the, the authentic sect of Islam is going to be the one that's rejected by all the others. So if we get them to where they're not rejected by all the others, then they'd have to reject themselves. That is a powerful question. We should explore that further. And here's the reality, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the reality. If we made a powerful case that Ahmadis are true Muslims, and Shabir, it was so powerful that Shabir Ali and Sheikh Hassan al-Hakim and Adnan Rashid, all these guys just said, ah, oh, gosh, we were wrong. They are true Muslims. Do you think for a second that Ahmadis would suddenly go, oh, well, I guess we can't be the true sect of Islam because all these other sects of Islam now accept us. Do you think they would, or do you think they just reinterpret everything? Their own argument. If that happens, if that happened, they would say, well, um, of course, eventually Allah uh, um, changed the hearts of these people and made them accept the, the truth. And this is the proof. And this is the proof that that, that we, are, we were always right all along. <laughs> yeah, and they would... Uh... They would reinterpret prophecies and they would find prophecies to, to say something along the lines of the true, the only true sect of Islam is one that would at first be unanimously rejected by all the other sects of Islam, but would then be accepted by sects of Islam. They'd have, they come up with something like that. And that's the problem, guys, when, when you interpret passages like these guys do to, which is, which is called eisegesis, you're, you're putting your own meaning into the text rather than letting the text give its meaning, uh, you can pretty much defend anything. You can pretty much defend any position, no matter yes. how silly and ridiculous. All right, guys, I am ending the poll. I am going to end the poll now because I want to take a screenshot of it and list this as the final results. David would destroy the poll. Hey, where'd my poll go? Oh, there we go. The poll has been finished. Are Ahmadis Muslims? Woohoo! Ahmadis of the world, rejoice. I've done a better job at defending you than all your caliphs and dawah guys have been able to do. Based. And all you guys do is insult me and heap insults on me and behave very arrogantly. All right, any final thoughts, AP? What are we doing? Anything? Uh, anything we need to be aware of coming up? Uh, no, they're just current events with the world going on every every single day, which is just crazy. Uh, other than that, uh, the, the Ahmadis, I just I would just say I, I uh, at this point, since we have been there, we have we 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 did stand up as the primary defenders of Ahmadiyya here in this case. Although I still totally maintain that they're not Muslims, but still we defend them. Uh, I, I would say that it's it's a given that um, I, I command them to to thank us and apologize for their behavior toward us. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, we can probably expect to go live again this week uh, plenty because there's a lot of important stuff going on in the world right now, including elections in Iran, elections in France, uh, stuff in Israel all the time, and so on. Um, I think... We're we're on live on uh, IP's channel on Tuesday, aren't we? Is that Tuesday? IP too. It's not nothing special. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, on Tuesday. Yeah. On Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be on IP's channel talking about. IP says that Daniel Hakikachu was saying all sorts of uh, false stuff, factually false stuff, which would be a shocker. It would be a shocker. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go through that. 
Uh, apart from that, yeah, we'll probably be going live as much as we can to catch up on stuff, especially since there were, then we're going to be um, out of town recording some stuff. Yeah, out of town. And guys, uh, yep, check the video. On my, if you're not, if you're in the Ohio area and you are not aware of the conference that we've got there, um, starting on what is it, the eleventh? Yeah, starting on the eleventh of next month, July eleventh through fourteenth. Uh, check out the video, recent video on my channel, because if you want to come, uh, tickets are free. Uh, if you want to support the conference, because they're they're sort of crowdfunding crowdfunding the cost to cover all the uh, plane tickets and hotel rooms and all that stuff, uh, you can support. And check that out. But I uh, hope to see you in Ohio if you're in the area. And we will catch you all oh, um, very soon. Be be before we forget, you might want to know that England won today against... Uh, against... Wait, who did they play against? In what? In the only only sport that matters, football. American football. Good, good, good. It's good, it's good they forgot. finally... It's good all these other countries are finally getting... I forgot NFL they teams. played again. Yeah, but they won and Spain won too. So this is some good progress just to keep you up to, up to, up to date with uh, what is going on in the important stuff in the world. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Yes, we will be back. Inshallah. All right, everyone. Uh, Goat Hub says Mike Winger, the type of guy to be friends with Tarun. Yeah, because they're both vegans. Catch y'all next time.